On day one, I spawned in as a baby Godzilla. I was at a shoreline of a huge city where there were a bunch of people roaming around. Whoa, is this my home? Just then, explosions sounded off everywhere and huge buildings started to get destroyed. I walked through the streets, seeing countless explosions and nuclear blasts. What's going on? There were army men running through the streets in fear. Here. King Ghidorah has attacked us again! Prepare the defenses! I then heard a loud screech and turned only to see the largest kaiju I had ever seen. King Ghidorah. He was fighting against my father, Dagon, who was trying to protect the city. I will take over this planet so that it can be suitable for me, the Alpha Predator! I won't let you! Oh no! I have to help my dad! I still started to run over, but just then, a diamond missile got shot down from the sky, landing right on me. Ah! From its radiation blast, I was transformed into a baby diamond Godzilla, and now had five diamond hearts. What happened to me? Son, you must get out of here now. Before I had any time to react, an explosion took place on the wall right behind me, revealing an army squad and a tank. A kaiju? Capture him! Uh-oh. On day two, I was running through the streets away from the military. Leave me alone. There were explosions going on all around us, and I knew I have to get back to my dad. I then turned and realized I ran straight into a dead end. Oh no, I'm trapped. Please don't hurt me. I want to help you guys. Lies, you're nothing but a monster. Just like that dragon. I got angry from his comment, causing an urge to fill up within me. Because of this, I let out a very powerful diamond beam. Whoa, I have diamond powers. I used my newfound ability to blast the hole through the wall, revealing a path of rubble that led up to one of the rooftops. I jumped from platform to platform as the military men started to shoot at me with their weapons. Thankfully though, I barely made it. Yes, but just as I did, my father got thrown aside on a building right in front of me. Dad, there you are. Uh, son, listen to me. You must do everything you can to stop King Ghidorah and protect these people. If not, nothing will be left in this world. Show them that not all of us kaijus are monsters. I love you. Just then, a lightning shot got blasted down onto him, killing him for good. No! <laughs> in time, I will be in my full power. And when I am, this entire world will suffer under my rule. He shot out a gravity beam down onto me. Ah! On day three, I fell deep below the city and landed in a strange room. Ah, my head. I gotta find a way out of here. I started to run through the hallways and realized that I was in an underground lab. I continued to run until I made it inside of a large testing room where I saw a fragment that looked radioactive. Interesting. I grabbed it, causing the radiation to empower the diamond within me. My body transformed and I gained five more hearts. Whoa, absorbing radiation makes me stronger. Just then, bright red lights and alarms started to blare throughout the facility. Oh no, time to go. I kept running and saw an exit, but as I did, come on, we gotta get this monster out of here. What's going on? I looked over and saw that some army men had a moth-like kaiju in a testing tube. Please, I just want to be left alone with my family. Shut up! We are done running tests on you. Oh no, I can't just leave her behind. I have to help. On day four, I went towards the tube and the men noticed me. What? A diamond one? He must have absorbed the radioactive fragment. We need backup. Behind me dropped down a crazy military mech. Oh no. It 
it began to charge towards me and attack me with its crazy saw blade. Must eliminate Kaiju! Its attacks were very strong, but thanks to the radioactive fragment, I got stronger. I unleashed a brand new ability, allowing me to diamond stomp. Whoa! My stomp was so powerful that it launched the mech into a wall. I, I fell down. Yes, I did it. Hey, hold on. I used my diamond stomp to shatter the glass tube holding her. You saved me. All I ever wanted was to get back to my family. But the military, they captured me. They've been trying to get me too. I want to stop Ghidorah and show these people that not all of us kaiju are evil. I'd love to help. My name is Mothra. Nice to meet you. Suddenly, we heard a loud screech outside, and we went out to investigate, only to see King Ghidorah raining terror down from above on the whole city. Okay, we need to find somewhere safe to hide out, and fast. I need to get back home first and check on my family. Wait, hey, it's dangerous. On day five, I chased after Mothra as she led me far away to a secure included lake, but everything in the area was destroyed. What happened here? Oh, my, my family. We lived here, but they must have been taken. By who? I looked around for any clues until I saw a path of destruction that led out towards a beach. And in the far distance was a scary looking island. Could they be there? That place is Skull Island and it's very dangerous. Time to prepare then. Before I set out on my journey, Mothra and I cleaned up the area and I gathered enough materials to build us both large homes. I promise you, Mothra, I will go and find your family. Thank you again. My family can repay you too. They own one of the radioactive fragments. That's the fragment that made me stronger. There are more? Yeah, there are five fragments scattered throughout the world. And if that first one made you stronger, what's to say this one won't? I'll do anything to become strong enough to take Ghidorah down. Wish me luck. On day six, I went out and reached the shore of Skull Island. Huh, this place isn't so bad. Who wouldn't want to live here never mind i looked around until i found a path of destruction leading into the large skull mountain beyond the entrance was a pit of lava with jagged rocks leading across okay godzilla no biggie. I started to leap between platforms, using my diamond stomp to propel me across. Woohoo! This is easy. But as I said that, all of the island's plants around me all began waking up. Visitors are not allowed. They started to defend their home by shooting thorns and plant matter at me. Ow! Ouch! Hey! I then unleashed my diamond breath attack to stun the ones closest to me. But then I made the final jump and made it fully to the other side. Yes! I looked out to my new surroundings and saw a lush gorilla empire. And down in a valley at the center of it all was the giant gorilla, King Kong, dueling against a T-Rex? On day seven, I watched as King Kong was putting on a show for his home by beating into the dinosaur with his massive fists. Is that all you got? <laughs> with one final swing of his arms, the T-Rex slammed down, defeated. No taken. Don't mess with this guy. As I said this, gorillas jumped out from the trees, landing behind me. Intruder! In one mighty leap, King Kong crashed down, startling me. What are you doing in my kingdom? Um, I'm here for a family of moths that it seems your people stole. <laughs> Follow. In another mighty leap, King Kong sprung away deep into his kingdom. I did as he said, until I arrived at a throne where Mothra's family was held in cages. Let us go! And to the left of Kong's throne was the radioactive fragment. I need that! 
<laughs> no! I need it! Now that my mighty battle axe has been stolen. Your axe? Yes, without it, I am not nearly as strong for my battles. But with that fragment, hopefully I can grow stronger. How about a deal, King? If I return your axe, you free Mothra's family and give me back that fragment. Hmm, deal. On day eight, I journeyed through Skull Island, looking for any sign of King Kong's axe, until I saw a grand tree in the center of the forest, and high up, laying on one of its branches, there it was. Now, how do I get it? I used my diamond breath to try and break the tree limb, but it was no use. All I was doing was shaking the entire tree, and because of this, storming out of its roots was a treant guardian. Stay away from my tree! He began to attack, constantly reaching into the ground to summon roots that hurt! I knew I had to defend myself and unleash my diamond breath directly into his face, stunning him! <laughs> Look, stop fighting! All I want is that axe, okay? I'm not trying to hurt your tree! That axe is owned by that stupid gorilla! His empire is polluting my home! I just want it back to how it once was! I'm confused. What are you talking about? The tree ant brought me over to an ancient spring, but it was corroded and the water was polluted. I used to love this spring, but now it is a total wasteland. That's horrible. I looked out over the water and felt an urge within me. Hold on. I focused all of my power on using my diamond breath into the spring. Because of this, the diamond energy purified the polluted water and all of the nature around it. Whoa. Oh my, thank you. You helped me, so I will help you. You can take the axe. On days 9 to 10, I retrieved the axe from the tree before hurrying back to Kong's empire. But something was horribly wrong. They're under attack. Flames were burning down every tree in the area as gorillas were running away. What's going on? Then the sky turned gray as bolts of lightning began to shoot down everywhere. And at the center of it all was King Ghidorah. Where is that diamond Godzilla? I know he's here and I shall kill you just like your father. I did my best to sneak past and found that hiding behind the throne was Mothra's family. Thank goodness they're alive. Wait, the fragment. I have to get it. I ran through the battlefield and was able to pick it up, causing it to absorb within me. I gained five more hearts and I felt my tail and the spines on my back grow even stronger. Because of this, I had a new diamond tail slam ability. Awesome. <sighs> Godzilla. I looked over and out of the destruction rose King Kong, but he looked super hurt. Oh no, are you all right? I won't be if we stay here. King Ghidorah, he's too strong. Then let's get out of here. Now, together, we were all able to find a secret passageway within the empire and escape. On days 11 to 12, I made it safely back to base with everyone following behind me. That was close. Too close. Ghidorah is growing way too powerful. I've never seen anything like it. That's why it's important for all of us to work together, King Kong. My father believed in us to protect this world, and that's what I'm gonna do. I respect that. I will stand with you. I took the time to build up the gorillas, their very own jungle home inside the base. Then I handed over the axe back to Kong. Here you go. Thank you. Me and my gorillas will fight with you. I looked over and Mothra had reunited with her family. Thank you so, so much, Fozo. You really did it. You saved my family. Well, it's thanks to your family's radioactive fragment that I was able to get us out of there. Um, where is that coming from? I followed the noise out of my base, and in the sand of a nearby beach was some sort of mechanical device? Is this a tracker? Suddenly, a massive cage fell around me, and I was ambushed by a group of military men. Nice work, boys. You are coming with us. 
On days 13 to 14, I found myself inside of a weird looking cage in some sort of military lab. Staring me down on the other side of the bars was an admiral. This is ugly as the rest of them. Hey, I'm trying to help you humans. Let me go. Oh, shut up. You're a monster just like that wicked King Ghidorah. Man, start the experiment. The what? An army man flipped the switch and my whole cage erupted with electrical energy. Ah! Because of this, I felt like I was about to collapse. I felt so weak. With your DNA, who knows what kind of weaponry we can create. <laughs> I was left weakly standing in my cage. Hey, were you uh, really telling the truth back there? Do you really want to help people? Yeah, yes. The robot then used electricity to bust open my cage. What? Why? No time to explain. We gotta get out of here before Admiral Stenz comes back. On days 15 to 16, I escaped the military base with the help of the robot. Phew! The military is doing everything they can to overpower you and Ghidorah, but clearly they got it all wrong, pal. Yeah, I just want to show them that I'm trying to do the right thing. Speaking of that, why did you save me? Because everyone in the army treats me like a joke, like some kind of mobile trash can. I just want to show the world that I can be, well, more. I think you and I will get along just fine throughout the city i heard the strangest sounding siren what is that we followed the noise and looked out to see a tall lanky creature with a siren on its head that is also why i kind of got you out of there <laughs> that siren head he stole one of those radioactive fragments and is now going on a rampage oh no we need to stop him and i need that fragment i was about to run out and challenge siren head but when I looked back up, it was gone? Where did he go? On days 17 to 18, I sent the robot back to my home and went in search of Siren Head. I was looking throughout the whole city as a fog started to form. Where could that thing be? Attention civilians! An extremely dangerous Dolly Godzilla has escaped! That's not good. I better stay stealthy. Stealthy? I can help with that. What the? Ah! Shh, dummy, stay quiet. Oh, I guess you are really stealthy, Mothra. How can you help? I'll scout up ahead. Don't you worry. Mothra flew up above the city and started to fly directly from above. She would use her insect eyes to peer throughout the fog and scout out every street for me. Psst, Fozo, this way. I followed her quietly through the streets until we reached a city park. There, wrecking a whole Ferris wheel was Siren. Head. Now's our chance! On days 19 to 21, I ran out onto the park to face Siren Head. Hey, you! The tall figure slowly turned towards me. Ah, the Diamond Godzilla. I've heard so much about you. You have? While well, King Ghidorah is on his quest to dominate and destroy this world, he asked for us other monsters to join in. I won't let you get away with this. Ha! Do you even know what King Ghidorah truly plans to do? Do you? Siren Head then sprinted towards me to attack. He would use his long arms to swipe at me and keep me at distance. I did everything I could to fight back, but then I saw Mothra fly in to attack as well. Take this! But she was quickly swatted away. No! She fell back and landed on the ground next to me. Mothra! Well, now I'm angry! In a flash of brilliant light, Mothra grew in size and strength. Whoa! She flew up and spread her wings wide, which caused shards of light to shoot down and pierce through Siren Head. Ah! I followed up with my diamond tail attack. 
taking him down for good. Where he once stood fell the next fragment, but it looked dead. Is all of its radiation gone? No! What are we going to do now? On days 22 to 26, I made it safely back to base with Mothra, and I saw that the military robot made it there safely too. I wasted no time building him up a mechanical laboratory all to himself. Oh, jeez. Thanks, Bozo. With all this equipment and stuff, I can start looking into King Ghidorah and those radioactive fragments. Woohoo! Sure thing. Speaking of which, any idea on how to fix this? Oh, boy, oh, boy. This isn't good. I've never seen this happen to one of our fragments. Hmm. There's only one way I could guess how to fix it. You gotta get it contaminated with radioactivity again. Well, yeah, but how do we do that? I know of one place, but it's gotta be the highest security place in the city. On days 27 to 29, I made it to the heavily patrolled nuclear plant. Army men were roaming around everywhere, and they even had a giant tank patrolling the area too. I do not want to get hit by whatever that thing shoots. I looked towards the center of the site and saw that the massive cooling tower had a bright glow from the radiation inside. Okay, so I just got to get my fragments in there. Got it. Now, to stay quiet and come. <laughs> Godzilla! Alarm started to blast through the site, putting everyone on alert. Well, never mind. I started to power through the site, barreling straight towards the tower. Army men all around started to lay into me with their guns and weaponry. Knock it off! I swung my diamond tail in anger, destroying one of the nearby buildings. I just gotta get up there. I used my diamond stomp to propel me upwards to the top of the tower and threw the fragment inside. Because of this, it sunk into the nuclear pool below. Yes! But just then was a powerful shot from the tank. It crashed into the top of the tower and knocked me inside. Ah! On days 30 to 32, I bursted out of the nuclear cooling tower in my upgraded form. I gained five more hearts and grew into an even larger Godzilla. I want all guns on that monster! Every gun in the base unloaded onto me, but their bullets just bounced off of my new and improved skin. Now, my turn! I unleashed my diamond breath attack, scorching all of the military soldiers in the sight. I felt bad, but they had left me no choice. Then, rolling into the area was a giant tank. Diamond Godzilla, surrender now and Maybe we will kill you quickly. You know, I can't do that. The tank wasted no time firing right at me again. His missiles struck me and my diamond hide reflected some of the damage. I then ran into fight and we traded hits. Their armor was strong too, but I eventually got close enough to slam into the tank Finally destroying it for good. Yes. In the destruction, the tank had dropped a weird looking GPS tracker. Maybe that robot will know just what to do with this. On days 33 to 35, I was making my way back home through the city when something felt off. The sky started to turn red, and the air all around became burning hot. What's that rumbling noise? Just then, a huge volcano rose out of the ground, overlooking the city. What's happening? Rising from its apex was none other than King Ghidorah himself. I better hide. Yes, yes. With this, more allies shall join me in my conquest. Rise, Rodan! Bursting forth from the volcano were the massive wings of a magma pterodactyl kaiju. Your conquest, King Ghidorah, will be swift. 
Rodan flew over the city, dropping down pools of fiery magma in his wake. This isn't good. I need to get stronger before it's too late. On days 36 to 39, I rushed back to my base, handing over the GPS to the military robot. Any idea what we could use this for? Huh, maybe I'll take a good look at this. I gave him some time to work as I started to walk around my base. I watched as Moth and her family celebrated her upgrade and also looked at Kong's gorillas, enjoying their jungle home. I took some time to upgrade our home, building up more natural defenses and making it bigger and better in every way. And done! Perfect! I just wish my dad was here to see this. With that, I built up a claw-shaped monument to represent my father's pure strength. I'll avenge you, dad, and make sure your wishes come true. I promise. Oh, jeez, uh, Fozo, uh, Fozo! What? What is it, buddy? The, the GPS, it's like bugging out and stuff. I tracked its signal back to the military base. Something bad must be going on there. All right, then I guess I gotta go check it out out. On days 40 to 44, I made my way towards the military base. When I started to hear fighting, hold the line! What is going on? I ran up and watched as it seemed like the whole camp was fighting against a very large war mech. It would rain down barrages of missiles and wipe out groups of them at a time. I then saw it turn as the mech looked at the admiral. War mech model one, I order you to stand down. But the mech wasn't listening to his orders. No, leave these people alone. The mech then focused on me and began to attack. It launched the same barrage of missiles at me and they hurt a lot. I used all of my abilities at my disposal, but it just kept going. No, stop, wait. Out of nowhere, the Admiral fired an RPG and hit the War Max right on his head. Because of this, it ran away in panic. No, you, you saved us, but why? Because General, not all Kaiju are evil. On days 45 to 47, I walked with Admiral Stentz deeper into their base where he showed me even more destruction. I'm sorry, Diamond Godzilla. I'm sorry we treated you just like another one of those monsters. We were just trying to do what was right for our city. It's okay. I understand. Especially after what Ghidorah has been doing. It's wrong. Well, you see, that war mech we just scared away was supposed to defend us. We even put one of those radioactive fragments in it. But right when we did, everything went haywire and it attacked us. We couldn't control it. Wait, so the next fragment is in that machine? I don't know if I can stop it. It's powerful. Well, we did make it to stop you, but there just might be a way to exploit its weakness. Follow me. I went out and followed the Admiral as he led me to the edge of a tundra. The only real weakness that war mech has is ice. We can freeze it. We can destroy it. Some of our research notes an item deep in this tundra that could help you do just that. On days 48 to 52, I followed the Admiral's directions until I was so far inside the tundra that I couldn't see the city. I pushed forward until I found a giant lake that had been frozen over. There was an old frozen structure hovering over the ice as well. Huh, interesting. As I approached it, I heard a loud crack and in a flash of shattering ice, chunks of the lake thawed away to expose platforms heading towards the middle. Uh, hello? I looked out and on the center platform below appeared a colossal ice kaiju. Bah, the Diamond Godzilla. So it's true. You do exist. Yes, and I've been sent here to find an item that will grant me ice powers. Ah, so that's why you've come. He looked up above him, and that's when I saw floating in the icy cube was an arctic core. There, that's what I need. Well, if you want it, 
Show me your worth! On days 53 to 56, a snowstorm formed as the ice kaiju started to attack. He would send out pulses of pure frost as I tried to jump from platform to platform. And as I got close, he would just push me back with his attacks. Ah! Is that all you've got? I knew I couldn't get closer without stunning him, but he was way too strong. What do I do? There, I noticed two pillars that were pointed up, holding the large icy cube. Uh, yeah! Using my diamond breath, I blasted at both of them, breaking them. Because of this, the large cube crumbled and crashed right onto the kaiju. <laughs> And there, appearing in the broken rubble, was the Arctic core. Bingo! I grabbed it, causing the cold to empower me. And I gained a new frozen breath attack. Sweet! I am impressed. You see, I had to test you because I know Ghidorah's reign of terror will not end so easily. He's even started to affect the lands beyond the city. Then why don't you join me? Together, we can all take King Ghidorah down for good. On days 57 to 59, I was journeying back with the Ice Kaiju when I received a transmission. Godzilla, we have a visual on the war mech. It's just south of the city. Well, here goes nothing. We split up and it didn't take long for me to make it south of the city. And there he was. Attacking a power grid? The mech was slamming into everything it could, causing a ton of electricity to discharge into the air. Is that empowering him? He's trying to get stronger. Hey! Must eliminate Godzilla! Oh no! We began to fight as he would launch volleys of even more fire rockets. My path was now cut off by its flames, but I was ready. I used my new ice attack to extinguish the flames and get in close. Then I would move around every chance that I could and blast him with the frost beam. Rah! I could tell that my new attack was starting to hurt him because he was moving much slower and slower. With one final diamond beam, I took him down for good. Yes, I did it. And there where the war mech once stood was the radioactive fragment that was powering him. On day 60 to 63, I went up and absorbed the fragment, causing me to grow even more powerful. I gained five more hearts, and now I can send out a large explosive burst of diamond radiation. Yeah! I went back to the military base and found Admiral Stentz. Great work, Godzilla! Thank you! That's one less problem to worry about, but now my men have nowhere else to regroup. Our base is almost completely destroyed! Well, Admiral... I have an idea that just might solve that problem. We all started to head back to my base when suddenly, oh no. <laughs> On day 64 to 68, I was face to face with King Ghidorah. The Diamond Godzilla! You really think you can stop me? That's what your father thought. And look at where that got him. Don't you dare speak about my father like that! Ah! I charged in recklessly, infuriated by his words. We began to fight as I tried to slam and blast him with everything I could. He was was so strong though and was taking my hits like they were nothing. Ghidorah's gravity beam hit me head on, knocking me back. I knew he was stronger than anything I had faced before. Fire! The army started to shoot up at Ghidorah with everything they had too, but he was just too powerful. Ah, oh, humans. What a waste of life! <laughs> In one attack, Ghidorah nearly wiped out all of the soldiers. Ha! The fact that you're still alive, Fozo, tells me that your diamond has actually strengthened you. Who knows how powerful I could truly become with that power? <laughs> 
He then casted down a massive lightning strike onto me. Because of this, I began to pass out. On day 69 to 73, I woke up inside of King Ghidorah's volcano. Oh no. Hey, let me out of here. Just then, Ghidorah flew in, followed by Rodin. Cyrus! You have no right to even continue speaking to me. I am a god. No, you're wrong. You're not going to get away with this. <laughs> you have no idea how wrong you are. Ghidorah reared back his three heads and let out a powerful attack. He struck me right in my core, and I felt like my energy was being drained out of me. Then, in a huge flash, Ghidorah's body had become completely diamond as well. No! Yes! Yes! With this new power, this world will fall! Starting with this city, Rodan, finish him off. I no longer have a need for him. Yes, keep Ghidorah. Ghidorah flew back the way he came, and I was left alone with Rodin. I can't lose. I can't. With one tail swipe, I was able to break free. On day 74 to 77, Rodin charged in to attack. He would show off his speed and powerful fire attacks, and they were taking down my hearts fast. The humans out there don't even care about us. Why? Why do you fight for them? Because my father taught me it's the right thing to do. I tried blasting him out of the air and was hurting him every chance that I could. But I was just so weak. My heart were getting lower and lower. And I thought I was done for. No, no. Then in a large explosion, the military broke into the volcano. Admiral, I want all guns on that flaming dinosaur. No. The remaining military forces all unleashed the weaponry onto Rodin, weakening him. Because of this, I was able to unleash my new diamond radiation attack, taking him down for good. You, you guys saved me. Well, we're just glad you're okay. Now come on and let's regroup. I think we got a plan that could make you even stronger than Ghidorah. On day 78 to 80, I returned to my base with all of the military men, but we were met at the entrance by King Kong and the Ice Kaiju. What are they doing here? Guys, relax. They are our allies now, and they want to help. From there, I went off and gathered enough materials to build up the Admiral and his men their own homes. I then took the time to use my frost breath to form an icy cavern for the ice kaiju. I may not trust the military, but I am thankful for you, Fozo. Of course, we all have to work together now. I went over to the military robot's lab and he was talking to the Admiral. I'm sorry I neglected you for so long, little guy. Clearly you were the only one to believe in our giant kaiju friend here. Yeah, I'm just glad y'all came to your senses finally. It took you long enough. Godzilla, my men were able to secure the final radioactive fragment. I looked over and behind him was the last fragment. Sweet. Hold your horses there, boy. Our plan is to amplify its effects and make you even stronger. The only way to do that is, uh, by hitting you with a nuke. What? You heard me. We just need your help taking back our submarine. That's gonna be easier said than done. On days 81 to 85, I set out to the large cove on the seashore where the Admiral told me they had last docked their submarine. I looked out into the water and saw it floating out in the distance. I thought the Admiral said something was guarding this. Then, bursting out of the water was a giant sea kaiju. Oh, I spoke too soon. This is my territory. What? Man, I'm not trying to take your home. But the kaiju didn't listen and kept attacking. Lies! We continue to fight, trading each other blow for blow until I hit him hard with my diamond breath. Urgh! Do it! End 
end me! I will never live in peace. Ghidorah, humans, they will hunt me to extinction! Whoa, dude. No, I'm not gonna end you. Look, instead, I'll make you a promise. Soon, I'll make it so that you can live in peace, even with the humans. But to do that, I need that submarine. You, you will? Yes, please! Take it. Show King Ghidorah what a true alpha can do. On days 86 to 90, we set up the submarine in the ocean. Now that I'm in the middle of nowhere, you're just gonna nuke me? Yeah, that's about right. Ready? As I'll ever be, launching out of the sub was the nuclear missile as it flew and exploded into the water around me. A huge nuclear cloud formed above the water and all of its radiation empowered me. As the cloud dissipated, I felt my entire body change. I gained 10 more hearts and grew into a colossal size. Because of this, I can now summon my own diamond nukes. Yes, it worked. I then saw as Mothra was flying up to me across the water. This is fantastic, Fozo. Yeah, I just hope it's enough to stop King Ghidorah. On days 91 to 94, I made my way back to base with Mothra, and we looked at all of the work that we made. I think we could really do this. I know you can. All of King Kong and his gorillas looked so proud. Yeah, you can do this, Godzilla. Woohoo! Even the military robot was cheering me on. I really never thought I'd be working alongside you, Godzilla. The race is up to you. Please, save our city. Let's hope that I can. Well, you will have me as well. We started this together. It's time we end it too. On days 95 to 99, Mothra and I arrived in the burning city, looking out to see the diamond King Ghidorah at the peak of his volcano. So you really did survive. No matter, I'll ruin you like the rest of this worthless planet. Not while we're still here. <laughs> Me and Ghidorah rushed into battle. I used all of the abilities I gained along the way, like my diamond leap, to slam into him. Take this! He was taking hit after hit, but kept retaliating with his powerful gravity beams. Yeah! Mothra flew up and kept attacking with her beams of light to distract him. You insect! Because of this, he began to unleash attacks towards her. Hey, stay away from her. I ran in and tried to push Ghidorah back, but he didn't move an inch. <laughs> he knocked me back with another powerful blow, leaving me with only a few hearts left. No. I am and always will be a god. Ghidorah was about to end me, but then Mothra flew in the way. Wait! It's okay. I always have your back. In a single blow, Mothra was completely injured by his attack. Mothra? No! Oh, finish this. I believe in you. As her body faded away, her energy fell onto me, empowering me even more. You are gonna pay for that. On day 100, Ghidorah took to the skies in the city, and I chased after him. You aren't going anywhere. <laughs> Ghidorah shot at me with his gravity beams, but I just ran through them. Ugh! I slammed him with my attacks, now attacking in a full frenzy. I would use my diamond radiation to push him back and followed up with every attack that I could. You are not a god. You're just a monster. Silence! We continued to battle, trading blow for blow, until he started to fly up into the sky. Time to end this. I agree. We both fired out beams at one another, but my diamond breath against his gravity beam was much stronger. No. No! Finally, in a blast of my new diamond nuke ability, King Ghidorah was completely destroyed. And now this entire city could live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as a baby diamond tiger. I was in a diamond sanctuary with a lot of other tigers looking up to me. Uh, why is everyone staring? As the diamond tiger, your purpose holds great value in our war. 
did you say war? An explosion sounded off, caused by a clan of wolves. The wolves rushed into our valley and started to fight the tigers. My people clearly did not stand a chance, and we were all losing the battle fast. Oh no, I have to protect them. I charged in and tried to fight off one of the wolves, but because of my size, it didn't hurt him at all. He attacked me and my hearts were extremely low. <laughs> so you are meant to be the savior of the felines? You can't even put up a fight. The head wolf leader was about to strike me down, but the elder tiger jumped in the way. The elder tiger and Grimclaw started to fight each other, but quickly stopped when he got hit with one of Grimclaw's heavy attacks. No! All of the wolves then started to back off. Count your days. I promise you, they are numbered. On day two, the elder brought me under the sanctuary away from the battle. I can tell he wasn't in great condition. He's been poisoned by Grimclaw. He won't make it. No, I I'll go get a cure. Uh, what do you need? It's too late, Fozo. My death now is inevitable. It is you that is our final hope. I turned and noticed a shiny diamond artifact on a tall pillar. Out of pure instinct, I ran up and took it. This will take you to the first of five special diamonds, the Saber Diamond. For each one you collect, the closer you will come to stopping the Wolf Nation. Do it for me. End this war. But Elder, before I can finish my sentence, the Elder died. It's up to me? Oh no. Without the Elder, there is surely no hope in winning this war. I left the cave on day three, knowing I had to find the first diamond. How is this artifact meant to take me to it? It surely doesn't look like a map. You stay away from me! What is that? I ran over, only to see a tiny little elephant being attacked by a couple poachers. Finnegan is going to love this new prize we found. <laughs> they kept trying to fight the elephant. I knew I had to do something. I ran in and started to fend them off. I was still small, but since I was a tiger, I can tell they were scared. I let out a powerful roar, which sent the poachers running away. Oh, I'm not done today. Retreat. And don't come back. That was a close one. Thanks for saving me. My name's Peanut. My family and I were separated from the wolves, and I don't have a home. Neither do I. All I know is that I'm supposed to be following this thing. After I threw the item on the floor, Peanut jumped in excitement. Do you know what this is? You must look in a specific direction with an artifact like this. I remember reading about it, and as an elephant, I remember everything. It's worth a shot. I picked up the item and started looking around in circles. Once I looked north, the entire thing began to glow. Awesome. I think I know where to go. On day four, Peanut and I arrived at a diamond outpost. Whoa, this is amazing! We both went inside of it and was astonished by the sight. Right down the center of the room held the saber tooth diamond. This is what I'm looking for. I ran over and picked it up causing the entire room to shake. Uh, what's happening? I looked around and was now in a completely different area. Where am I? Ah, oh, you made it. I looked up and saw the elder tiger in his spiritual form. Wait, you're here? The elder tiger said nothing though and spawned a diamond guardian on the arena. Attack! What? The guardian charged at me with the intent to kill. I tried to fight back, but my hits weren't doing anything. Breathe, stay calm. That's when I noticed a new ability in my inventory. A diamond slash? I used it on the guardian. Take that. Because of my victory, I grew into an adult-sized tiger. I even gained five more hearts. Passing these trials upgrade me? Correct. Each diamond holds a different trial to overcome. Find the rest of the four diamonds. The sun diamond, the tiger's eye diamond, the sky diamond, and the heart of the jungle diamond. As a spirit, I reside here and will help you through your journey. Well done.
Bozo! Bozo! Ah! I woke up with Peanut yelling at me. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? Calm down. I heard loud howling going off in the distance, and that's when it hit me. We were in trouble. The wolves have found us. We have to go. Peanut and I were running through the forest fast with the wolf howls getting closer. If they find us... We are done for. As we were running, we came across a waterfall. An idea then sparked within me, causing both Peanut and I to go through it as a form of cover. The wolves showed up confused. I could have sworn I heard footsteps. Grimclaw won't be happy about this. It doesn't matter. They've already taken control over this part of the jungle. Let's hurry back to our outpost. I heard we captured more felines. The outpost? I wonder where that is. The wolves then left, and I knew that me and Peanut had to leave. I turned around, and we both slowly walked through the cave we were in which led outside of another waterfall. Whoa, this place is awesome. And safe. Together, Peanut and I agreed that this would be a perfect hideout for those who opposed the wolves. I quickly got to work making myself stone tools and got enough materials to make ourselves a proper shelter. Look, Peanut, this is perfect and safe. The wolves mentioned an outpost. I think it's time I find out more about their mission. After a bit of searching on day six, I managed to spot the wolves hideout. Just as they said, it was full of felines. My goodness. Listen here, Harrison. Take this message and deliver it straight to Grimclaw. It contains the location of a special diamond. We cannot let the diamond tiger get its paws on it. The messenger wolf then picked up the note, nodded, and quickly left the area. So if I get that note, I get the second diamond. It was risky, but I decided to follow after the wolf. On day seven, the wolf was running as fast as he could with me closing in right behind him. I have to be careful not to get caught. He then stopped inside of a spruce forest and slowly turned around. Show yourself, I know you are there. Well, that ended soon. Knowing I was caught, I walked out into the clearing. I knew I was being followed. Us canines have been putting up with these pesky cats for far too long. Soon, these forests will be fully in our control. The wolf charged in at me and slashed me with its claws. Memories of day one flooded through my mind. Ugh. I can't lose, not again. I fought back harder than I ever had before. I would hit the wolf and use my diamond slash to do an insane amount of damage. Ow! No! The wolf was then down for the count. I looked down and saw the note that he was carrying. Once I picked it up, I read it. Mr. Grimclaw, sir. We have found the next diamond's location. We need to send a guard there before the diamond tiger finds it. Here are the coordinates. Thank you very much. Because of you guys, I know exactly where to go. On day eight, I followed the coordinates that were on the note. It led me to a temple high on a mountaintop. I climbed up and found a camp that was set up outside. Huh, that's interesting. Could it be the wolves? If it was, I had to stay quiet and make sure I wasn't seen. I was able to find the main entryway of the temple and eventually found myself in an old looking mine shaft. I decided to go down into it. Deep inside of it was the second diamond, the sun diamond. Score! I spoke too soon though. A huge explosion happened on the wall, revealing a treasure hunter. Oh, Finnegan, you finally found this place. Perfect. Finnegan? Is this guy connected to those poachers? The treasure hunter ran up to the diamond and grabbed it. Hey, that's mine. My, my, my. Finnegan then pulled out a tranquilizer gun and shot me. Ouch! What the heck, man? I fought back, but was feeling slow. What did you do to me? Because of my slowness, I couldn't do much to him at all. He kept shooting at me until my vision started to become blurry. Oh, no. A tiger made a diamond? <laughs> I must have you. On days 9 to 10, I slowly woke up 
Ah, uh, where am I? My vision fully came back to me, and I noticed that I was inside of a large treasure room. There were various types of ingot mobs all inside of it. Iron zombies, golden creepers. This guy just thinks I'm some sort of prize. Yeah, welcome to the club, buddy. I looked inside of my cage and saw a golden key. What the? You can talk? I know, right? Oh, big shocker. Ooh, the key can talk. Well, guess what? I don't get it either. Whoa, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I looked at our cage and came up with an idea. Stand back. Using my diamond slash, I was able to break through the bars. The key and I were both free. So are you another one of his prizes? Or, ha, me? No, I was stored here long ago, locked away forever. I'm not really sure about my origin. All I know is that I can unlock doors. Well, maybe we can break out together. The key and I agreed. Since I helped him out of the cell, he brought me over to the door and said he can unlock it. Uh, you kind of have to like pick me up and do it though, you know? Do what? The key then jumped and flopped over on the floor, only for me to pick him up in my inventory. Uh, just whatever you do, uh, uh, don't drop me. Okay, okay, I won't. I used the key and was able to unlock the door. Look at that. I kind of know this little place inside and out. I may know where Finnegan is storing that special diamond you're looking for. Follow me, new friend. The key and I made our way through Finnegan's base, and eventually he led me to an observation room. There in the middle was the second diamond. Wow, you weren't kidding. You found it. Yeah, man, of course I did, you know, huh? I'm the greatest. I ran over and picked it up. Because of it, I got pulled into another vision. I was in a similar looking arena, but this time there was a long lava wall splitting it down the middle. And I noticed that I had a new item in my inventory. Fozo, you have made it to the second trial. This one is a little more tricky. How so? Just then, fireballs started to shoot out of the lava wall, each aiming straight towards me. Ah! I tried my best to dodge them, but sadly, wasn't able to. Breathe, Fozo. Concentrate. Let your inner diamond come forth. The fire charges kept shooting at me, but with the advice of the elder, I became more calm, more aware. The new item, I pulled it out, and once it was activated, I was able to see any nearby targets through any blocks. Whoa! I noticed that there was a diamond guardian who was throwing these charges at me and knew what I had to do. I waited for the right moment, then countered the fire charge right back to him, causing its defeat. Two for Fozo, zero for diamond guardians. Because of my success, my body began to transform once again. I gained five more hearts. Hey, I'm kind of like you now, Elder. No, Fozo. You will be better. Keep on working, my boy. You are doing great. Just then, I got sucked back out of the vision. Whoa, I don't think I'll ever get used to that. Oh, Tiger! Finnegan! He uh, just found out that we escaped. I think we could be in big trouble. On days 13 to 14, the key and I were running through Finnegan's base, trying to find a way out. Where are you, Diamond Tiger? Oh no, we have to make sure he doesn't see us. I was able to activate my diamond vision, which showed Finnegan searching through other rooms. Come on, Key, follow me. Yeah, yeah, I'm following, bud. Huh? Just uh, don't get us killed, okay? While escaping, we came across a locked treasure chest. Oh yeah, check this out. The key opened it and inside was some iron tools. Oh, so you can help me unlock treasures too? You're pretty awesome, you know that? Yeah, yeah. We made it to the exit and knew that we were home free. That is until I saw Grimclaw. What is he doing here? I knew I could smell a tiger here. My, my. How much you grow. Oh no, we need to go. Now, I grabbed the key and pocketed him. You are not going anywhere. Ah! 
As Grimclaw finished his sentence, he was blasted with one of Finnegan's explosions. This is my treasure. You dare to strike me, peasant? Both Grimclaw and Finnegan began to fight each other. Knowing this was my only chance of escaping, I used this to my advantage and slipped away with the key. Uh, he's getting away. Uh, I just want this tiger dead. Dead? Well... I just want him for his diamond skin. Well then, maybe we can make ourselves a little deal. The key and I were both able to escape back to the hideout. Man, that was too close. Bozo, oh wow. Thank goodness you're okay. I was worried sick. Look what I did. Peanut brought us over to a nice fruit farm. This looks great. She handed us over different types of fruit. And after eating it, I felt much better. Thank you, Peanut. With my replenished strength, I went over and made Key his very own house to live in. I got various types of blocks to make sure the entrance of it resembled a keyhole. Do you like it? Like it? Oh, buddy, I love it. Finnegan would have never done something like this for me. Ha <laughs> ha, I have my own home. Finnegan? Oh, I've dealt with his poachers. I know, he's the worst. It was good to see my two new friends getting along. That quickly got interrupted, though, because we heard rustling in the trees all above us. Oh, no. In a large poop of smoke, we were completely surrounded by cat bandits. They were everywhere. What the? Diamond Tiger, you're coming with us. On days 17 to 18, the bandits forced me into a forgotten Aztec temple deep within the jungle. This place looks forgotten because it was. We ended up in the main room. Okay, guys, seriously, what's going on? Shut up unless spoken to. Jeez, this guy's supposed to end this war? Silence. Follow me, Tagger. The bandit leader led me over to a room that held a map. What is this? The thing you want most, this map, will lead you straight to one of those diamonds you see. Oh, wow. Great. I ran over to get it, but the diamond shot me back. Ouch. Uh, 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 not so fast. You want this map? We want something from you first. Us cats possess a fabled nine lives amulet, which grants us much power. Recently, it has been stolen. That's where you come in. Let me guess. You want me to get the item for you? Correct. Get us this amulet, and you'll get your map. On days 19 to 20, I followed the cat's directions until I arrived at the base of a mountain. Okay. Carved into the side of it was a giant hole, which led to who knows where. I heard loud footsteps venture through it. Uh, is anyone here? I guess there's only one way of finding out. Once inside, I heard a giant sniff and turned around to see a large rat above me. An intruder! Attack! The rat charged in and hit me back. His attacks were very strong. My scratches weren't doing anything to him. Using its natural mining ability, the rat dug a giant hole underneath me, causing my capture. Wait! I'm not here to hurt you. That's what they all say. That's what those horrible wolves said too. But now my family, they're all gone. No, I'm trying to stop the wolves. But in order to do so, I need to return an amulet that you stole. The rat then pulled out the fabled nine lives amulet. I, I stole this to feel safe. With the dangerous area that I live in, I need it. Well, it isn't right to steal. Look, I may know of a hideout that can keep you safe, but it's gonna cost you that amulet. How does that sound? If what you're saying is true, then it sounds like a deal. On days 21 to 23, I sent the rat over towards our hideout and made my way back to the cat's temple. To my surprise, it was being attacked by a bunch of wolves. Oh no, the cats were fighting back, but I knew they needed my help. I jumped in and started to slash through them. Yeah, nice of you to join the party. Yeah, yeah, just fight. Our attacks together were a lot stronger. And because of it, the wolves all knew they were in a losing fight. Retreat! They all left right before one of them did a finishing blow to the bandit leader. No! 
He was dying. Quick, the amulet. Right. I ran inside of their temple and placed the amulet back down on their pillar, which sent out a huge red burst of energy around the base. I watched right then and there as the cat leader died. But because of the amulet, his body was lifted and regenerated back to life. Ah, oh, now I have eight lives left. Thank you, Diamond Tiger. You held up your end of the deal. It's time we hold up ours. The bandit leader then pulled out the map and threw it over to me. Just do us a favor and don't disappoint us felines. On days 24 to 26, I followed the map to a new location, which led me to a tower. The diamond is up there? I slowly but surely made my way up when explosions started to fall from the blocks above. They almost made me fall, but thanks to my quick reaction speed, I was able to dodge them. I used my diamond vision and saw a figure up there, but was too far away to see who it was. Who's doing this? I made my way up to the top and spotted the next diamond. After a quick glance, I couldn't see anyone here. As I went to pick up the diamond, it exploded right in my face. Because of the explosion, it was shattered. No, how am I gonna fix this? You thought you could just escape me? You? Grimclaw and I struck a deal. We learned we both want you dead. And if I kill you, I get to keep your diamonds. Finnegan charged in at me and used special grenade gadgets to greatly damage me. I tried to fight back. But because of the initial blast, I felt weaker than ever. I knew if I stood and fought, I was done for. But I also knew I couldn't just up and run away. What do I do? Knowing I would surely die either way, I decided to jump straight off the tower. Ah, oh. On days 27 to 29, I thankfully landed in a lake below the tower. Ah, oh, thank goodness this was here. I walked out of the lake and started to leave the area as fast as I could. All that mattered was that I had the diamond, but I don't know how I'm going to fix it or if I even can. I made it back home and saw the rat was there waiting. Hey, I see you found the place. I did. It looks lovely. The rat and I made him a nice huge hole inside one of the mountains to serve as his new home. It's perfect. Now, to figure out this diamond, I then noticed that there was a library? What's this doing here? I ran in and saw Peanut running around reading through various books. Peanut, have you been studying? Why, yes I have. I love reading. You know me. Well, unless you can help me find a way to forge this diamond back together, I'm afraid all of this is no use. I think I may know of something. Here it is, Fozo, the forge of lost souls. If any place can fix that diamond, it's this one. On days 30 to 32, the rat drilled us down inside of a massive forge. Whoa, is this the place? Yep, it's the forge of lost souls. Thanks, buddy. I think we got it from here. Peanut and I ventured throughout the blacksmith. Straight down the middle of it was a giant forge that looked almost ancient. Give me the diamond. I gave Peanut the shattered diamond, and she walked up to the forge and threw it inside of it. This caused the entire thing to activate. We heard the sound of large wings beginning to flap. I turned around and saw a massive bird flying over our heads. Who are you? Trespassers! Only those who are worthy can use this forge. Being made out of diamond isn't worthy enough? The bird shot down magical attacks from the sky, which caused me to temporarily levitate. Ah! I was dropped down. Keep him busy. The diamond's almost ready. I did as Peanut told me, but this bird was starting to do some serious damage to me. It levitating me made me able to slash it a few times. But besides that, I couldn't do anything. Ah, any day now! Now, Bozo, it's ready! Peanut threw over the diamond to me, which summoned me into another vision. On days 33 to 35, I was standing right in front of the Elder Tiger. Elder, I'm in need of a little help. I can sense it within you. You have been facing many difficulties, but nonetheless still making extreme progress. Because of that, I'd like to grant you this. A new ability appeared in my inventory. I shot it, which summoned giant diamond blasts. 
Shoot the targets now, young one. I did as the elder told me and shot at each target, correctly hitting it. Because of it, I grew stronger in my stance and gained five more hearts. Thank you, elder. Even in the afterlife, this war has prevented my eternal rest. I want you to know that because of my role as the elder, I will always be here and help you make sure that us felines win. I know. Thank you. Stay strong, Fozo. I shall see you again. My vision returned, and I was back in the forge with the sunbird charging right at me. I dodged it, and as it was flying away, I used my new diamond blast ability. He stood no chance. He started flying away scared. Yeah, that's right. As he was flying out, he dropped a bottle of sacred honey. Huh, what? is this on days 36 to 38 peanut and i returned back to base feeling great hey fozo while mining back home i was able to find a lot of these for you the giant rat threw me over some diamonds whoa thanks i got them and quickly upgraded my tools into diamond ones i then brought over the bottle of sacred honey to the middle of our hideout oh is that a sacred honey huh what's that even supposed to mean dude i have no idea before we can think anymore we heard countless howls go off in the distance i looked all around our hideouts and saw a bunch of wolves overlooking us oh no bozo they found us the wolves all charged in and started to attack. Using my diamond slash and blast, they were losing a lot. You guys may have been stronger before, but how about now? <laughs> the sky then went dark and the wolves all stopped and started to act weird. The moon slowly came out from behind the clouds, revealing its pure light onto their skin. This caused all of them to transform into massive, scary werewolves. Oh no. There's no way I can take all these guys on. I have to lead them away from this place. Hey, follow me. I ran away with the werewolves chasing right behind me. On days 39 to 43, I was running as fast as I could. I heard distant footsteps running throughout the trees surrounding me. Oh no, they're too fast. I turned around and saw one right there there he swung and one attack took away a lot of my hearts i have to fight back i kept my distance while the werewolf was trying to close in but thanks to my blast i was able to keep him at bay one more blast and he was down then swarmed in another one and another ah no i can't go out like this as i was about to die the sun broke through the trees causing all of them to turn back into normal wolves take this i shot out a blast that killed one of them making the rest run away ouch these guys are getting stronger too but how i then turned and noticed i was right outside of a strange structure with its entrance in the shape of a wolf's head huh Maybe I can find out. On days 45 to 47, I got a closer look of this hideout. Wait, Grimclaw? What is he up to? With this, my soldiers, you will be granted a strength like no other. He lifted up an elixir, and once dumped on the wolves, they all began to turn into werewolves. So that's how they're getting stronger. That blasted tiger escaped me once more. How pathetic you've turned out to be. Excuse me? I gave you one task to stop this tiger so I get what I want and you get what you want. I should have known better than to trust a human. <sighs> no matter. I sent my men out to take care of him with their new power. So in other words, I don't need you anymore. Why? He then attacked Finnegan, making him unconscious. I thought they were friends. Take him to the dungeons to rot. I was sneaking my way through Grimclaw's base on days 48 to 50. Why am I doing this? Ugh, I can't just let Finnegan die. Using my x-ray vision, I made sure there were no guards throughout the base. The only one I managed to find was Finnegan's, and he didn't look so good. I ran throughout the halls and finally entered a room he was being held in. Yeah, here to finish the job, are you? Just do it! No, I'm better than that. I opened his cell and let him out. 
Listen, we need to leave now before Grimclaw finds out. You saved me? Now's not the time. Come on. We both ran out of the dungeons and one wolf spotted us. Hey! Thankfully, Finnegan threw an explosive at it, killing him. This why? We both made it a safe distance out of the wolf's hideout. Why? Why risk your life for me? Because, Finnegan, us tigers aren't like the wolves. Huh. On days 51 to 53, I was making my way back home. I had to make sure my friends were okay. As I was running, I got hit from behind. Ouch! Who did that? Me, you idiot! A bee was flying around me inside of a flower forest. Every time he got close, he hit me, which dealt poison. Hey, knock it off! I know you have our sacred honey bottle. Give it to me, or I'll use my stinger on you! I have what? Wait a minute. The honey bottle. You want this? My queen is a very dangerous lady, and she won't be happy. Okay, okay. Calm down. Look, bring me to your colony. I have a few questions for your queen. The bee brought me over to a massive tree. Hanging from one of the branches was a beehive. The bee was then flying up. Hey, wait. How am I supposed to get up there? <sighs> Take one of these. Stupid. Winged. The bee threw me over a set of bee wings. Here goes nothing. Okay. Oh, goodness. This feels weird. Once up and inside, there was a row of bees all lined up, leading to their massive queen. B579, you dare bring a trespasser here without my knowledge? Queen, your highness, he possesses the bottle of sacred honey. As they were talking, I looked up high and saw that they were in possession of one of the sacred diamonds. It was the sky diamond. How did you get that? The diamond? It was here when we moved in. Us bees migrate all the time. And this diamond here serves as a great decoration piece for our home. I'll make you a deal. You take this bottle of honey and I take the diamond. The queen then signaled one of her workers to pick up the bottle. I don't think so. This bottle was rightfully ours. Matter of fact, I'm not quite fond of trespassers. She got up and started to make her way over to me. Hey, uh, we can talk this out. No, we won't. She then started to attack by herself. She was already really tough, but with her workers by her side, the battle was that much harder. I fought back with my diamonds, trying to show my worth, but she wasn't budging. As we were fighting though, the entire beehive began to shake. Uh, what's going on? The beehive then fell out of the tree. Ah! Ah, my head. I looked around at the now totally destroyed beehive. No, how could this have happened? Our home, our beautiful empire. I heard a caw and looked up towards the branches to see the same bird from before. You! I was extremely angry for the bees. Their entire home was now destroyed. I used my diamond blast and was able to shoot the bird one last time right out of the sky. With it defeated, I looked at the bees and can tell that they were all devastated. Guys, I, I can help you make a new empire. Why? Why would you do that? Because everyone deserves to have a home. Look, I know a perfect spot for you guys too. Everything will be fine. The bees were all filled with gratitude. I think I misjudged you, Tiger. I am sorry. Take this. The queen brought me over to the diamond and gave it to me, which turned everything white. On days 59 to 60, I was back in another vision, but the arena this time around looked much different. On the temple stood the elder tiger, but he looked normal. In the blink of an eye, a swarm of wolves all charged in at him. Oh no! I tried to help, but realized I was stuck in place. He surely was putting up a fight, but was nowhere near winning. He was surely going to lose. Right before he died, the arena flashed again, now being completely empty. What just happened? That there was a lesson, Foso. Not all battles are meant to be fought alone. I have learned that the hard way many times, but I want to make sure you never have to. 
my body began to change again. I gained five more hearts as my diamond skin hardened. And I even grew a diamond on the back of my tail. I looked in my inventory and noticed a diamond staff. When activated, it shot out minions that would help me in my fights. Awesome. You are close, Fozo. I can feel it. My vision then came back. Thanks, Elder. I promise I won't let you down. On day 61 to 62, I brought the bee colony back to my hideout. Using the materials from the beehive, we all worked together to make them some new hives, as well as a honey throne for their queen. This shall do. Because they were here, flowers began to naturally sprout all throughout the base. Looks like they're fitting in great. Fozo. Finnegan, what are you- I know, I know. You helping me made me realize that my ways were wrong. And I want to return the favor for my rescue. If you trust me, I can potentially lead you to the final diamond. On day 63 to 65, Finnegan and I made it back to Grimclaw's hideout. Wait, what are we doing here? I have a special book that was taken from me here. It will lead us to a tiger tomb that I believe will hold the last diamond. Tiger tomb? Correct. There have been legends of a tiger spirit that resides here, one of which has never rested. Maybe it can grant me the last diamond. I trusted Finnegan, and the both of us snuck back into Grimclaw's base. We were being careful, trying not to alert any wolves, until we made it inside of a room that held tigers. Wait, no. Cats? Diamond Tiger! Grimclaw, he's turned us tigers into these house cats! He's getting stronger by the day! That monster! I pulled out my pickaxe and freed them! Don't worry, guys. I know a new home for you! I looked over at Finnegan, searching the chests in the room. No, 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 no! He's not here! What do you mean, it's not here? Well, well, well. Look who decided to show up. Oh, no. We were face to face with Grimclaw on days 66 to 68. Before, Fozo, you amused me, but now you are starting to become a real pain. Oh no. What do we do? Follow me. Finnegan threw a bomb at Grimclaw, which stunned him. While stunned, we were running out of the dungeon as fast as we could until Finnegan got shot in behind by one of his attacks. Finnegan! Listen closely, Fozo. The poachers. If anyone knows where that book is, it's them. Why? Why are you telling me this? They're hit. I'm too weak to go on. I feel it. You rescued me. It's time I return the favor. Finnegan pushed me out of the way and charged in at Grimclaw. No, wait. While they were fighting, I knew that I had to leave. Finnegan didn't last long at all and was quickly defeated. On day 69 to 72, I left. Finnegan was gone. I knew that I had to pay respects. I arrived at his base and made him a grave monument out of the riches from his previous adventures. He would have wanted it this way. I know you didn't make the best choices, Finnegan, but you were able to redeem yourself and ended up being a good man. While mourning, I heard the sounds of fireworks all shooting around the courtyard and saw countless poachers there, extremely sad over their loss. We hereby send off our Captain Finnegan with a proper treasure hunter funeral. They set off another wave of fireworks, and once done, one of the poachers approached me. Hey, your captain, he sacrificed himself for me. He died a hero. He wanted me to live so that I can find his journal. All of us here look up to Finnegan, especially me. The poacher then pulled out Finnegan's journal and threw it over to me. Wait, you guys had it? This journal holds all of Finnegan's tales of adventure. Use it wisely, Tiger. While you're out adventuring, we will be sworn protectors of your hideout. It's what Finnegan would have wanted. On day 73 to 77, the poachers and I made it back to my tiger hideout. I helped them build a nice little guarded wall in front of the waterfall so they can keep guard outside of our home. This looks perfect. I then walked inside and saw all of the tiger cats that we recently saved. Knowing they also needed a home, Peanut and I worked together to make them their own little town inside of the hideout. Thanks, Fozo. This new form feels weird, but it's nice to feel protected. Of 
course. I pulled out Finnegan's journal and began to read it. The tiger's restless tomb, a sacred place that resides deep underground. It's said to hold an ancient tiger spirit that has never yet rested before. Whomever rests it shall be granted a special prize, the heart of the jungle diamond. I finished reading the journal, which lastly stated I needed a key in order to enter. I looked up and Key was standing right in front of me. Oh, was that uh, Finnegan's journal you had there? I heard about his sacrifice. You know, I was not expecting a twist like that. Hey, you said you didn't know about your origin, right, Key? Yeah, right. One day, I just remembered being inside of Finnegan's treasure room. Well, I think I just found out about where you really came from. Follow me. On day 78 to 80, Key and I followed the journal's instructions and found a large and creepy gravesite. Oh boy, oh boy. I feel it, Fozo. This place feels like home to me. Okay, Key, stay close. We walked in, trying to be careful by not setting off any traps. After a while, we stumbled across a statue much larger than the rest. This one resembled a tiger. The key stood back. Hey, what are you doing? I don't know, little diamond tiger, but I have a strange instinct. The key angled himself and beamed out a large yellow laser, which opened up a doorway under the tiger statue. Haha, <laughs> look at that, dude. I'm like so cool. This is it. This has to be where the last diamond is. On days 81 to 85, we were both underneath the tiger's entry. These tunnels looked like they haven't been roamed in centuries. We came across a room that was filled with bones and lit up by soul lanterns. What now? The soul lanterns then activated. Oh no, what was that? It summoned haunted spirits around the room. Intruder! They all began to attack me. Their hits did a lot of damage. With my new ability, though, I sent out waves of my diamond protectors, which fought them off as well. He was even fighting by shooting his beam on them. Yeah, take that, you losers. Yeah. Together, we were able to take all of the ghosts down. The lanterns transformed back and a passageway opened up in front of us. We walked through the passageway and were met by a large underground tomb. Nature has taken over this place. This soul better be valuable. I walked in front of the tomb and held the journal in my hand. What now? Uh, creepy. Here goes nothing. I let out a roar, which summoned a tiger spirit in front of me. But to my surprise, it was the elder? Whoa, I bet you didn't see that twist coming. What is happening? Why have I been brought here? That's when it hit me. Even in the afterlife, this war has prevented my eternal rest. It's you. You're the spirit that needs to rest. Rest? Fozo, I cannot rest until I know all the tigers are safe. No, Elder. You've done your job. You've helped me grow so much, and because of you, we have a fighting chance against the wolves. But I'm scared, Fozo. I'm scared. Don't be, Elder. Your spirit, your beliefs, they will live on within all tigers. It's okay. Rest now. The Elder Tiger agreed, which caused the entire room to fill with a white aura. The Elder Tiger was now gone, and on a pedestal in front of the tomb was the last diamond, the heart of the jungle. I went over and picked it up. I gained 10 more hearts and felt stronger than ever. I now had wings, just like the Elder, which granted me the power of flight. I promise, Elder, I won't let you down. On days 91 to 94, I made it back home with Key. I looked around at everyone that we brought. Seeing everyone happy, everyone getting along, it filled me with pride. I know the Elder Tiger looked over all the tigers, but I think it's my destiny to look over not just them, but everyone. My, my, Fozo. I know I lost my family, but now, with all of these people, it feels like I've gained a new one. Me too, Peanut. 
Me too. The sun then started to set, and we heard howls go off deep within the nearby forest. Wolves rushed in through the front of our hideout and began to attack some of our people. No! I rushed over and made quick work of them. Bozo, the wolves! I think they're starting their final attack. What should we do? We are done running. It's time we take the battle to them and fight back. On days 95 to 99, I was following the distant house and made it to the edge of a jungle. There waiting for me was a line of werewolves and Grimclaw standing in the middle. <laughs> you think you have a chance? Once I kill you, I will imprison your people for eternity. I promise you won't kill me. Grimclaw then signaled his men and they all started to attack. I used my wings and flew over them. With my diamond blast, they couldn't even touch me. Some though managed to jump high enough and scratch me. Ow! I needed some help. That's when I turned and saw the poachers right by my side. With their weaponry and my powers combined, we managed to turn the tide of this battle and started to take down the werewolves. No, as feared, he's grown too strong. I must retreat. I watched as Grimclaw fled, leaving his men and army behind. Coward! Because of this, they all surrendered and stopped attacking. We did it! Not yet. Watch them. I have to stop Grimclaw. On day 100, I found and confronted Grimclaw. It's over! This war, this world, it should have been ours! I will make you regret opposing me in combat. Grimclaw charged at me with everything he had. Every attack he hit dealt heavy poison damage. I knew that I had to end this fight quick before the poison took me out. I used my wings and was able to fly overhead, allowing me to dodge some of his attacks. But with his high sense of smell and sight, he was too fast for me. Remember your training, Fozo. Remember all of it. It is you that is our final hope. Remember that, my boy. Remember. I can't give up. Using everything I had, I hit harder than I have ever had before and shot him. Then summoned my diamond allies and shot him again. I was moving so fast, he didn't even realize what was going on. Surrender, Grimclaw. Never! Fine. I shot my diamond blast at him one last time, which defeated him for good. This war is over, and peace was just along the horizons. On day one, I spawned in as a baby diamond shark. Whoa, why am I diamond? In front of me swam both of my parents, and we were all inside of our ocean home. Son, you're diamond. Oh my, this means he's special. Special? Just then, a blast occurred, and a bunch of scuba divers swarmed down. I watched as all of them started to attack and kill the people of my home. Son, you must swim now. A scuba diver much larger than the rest submerged. <laughs> yes! Swim! Swim, you pathetic animals! Soon you will die under me, a Dominic! He turned his attention to my parents. Mom? Dad? Before I could do anything, he shot out a powerful attack, killing both of them instantly. No! A poor diamond shark? <laughs> I bet you're scared. Men, kill the rest. I'll take care of you myself. Okay, time to swim. I started to swim away fast with Atomic chasing right behind me. On day two, I was doing everything I could to get away from the scuba diver. You will not escape me. Since I was a baby, I still wasn't fast at all. Ah, how am I gonna lose this guy? Just then, I came across a large scary crevice inside of the ocean. Oh no, knowing I had no other choice, I swam deep inside of it. Once at the bottom, I found myself in an underwater cavern. Okay, I think I lost him. A diamond shark? What the? I turned around only to see a large diamond lady floating before me. Um, who are you? Oh, little one, I am the diamond goddess. I see the diamond has finally fused itself with a sea creature. Yeah, I don't know why. My parents said I was special, but then 
That horrible man. You are special. It is up to you to stop him and his large crew and save us sea creatures. Go find the first of the diamond segments, the diamond tooth. Diamond tooth? I don't even know where to start. Just then, we heard explosions going off in the distance. I think the shark went this way. Oh no. Go now, shark. I will be in contact with you real soon. The goddess then summoned a tidal wave and pushed me away. Ah! Ah, ah, my head. I looked around and found myself now inside of a coral reef area. Ah, stay away from me, you feathered freak. Who is that? I swam closer and was able to spot a bird flying around and attacking a tiny seahorse. Oh no, he needs help. Hey, you, cut it out. Ah, look at this tough guy. No! The bird then began to fly around me and try to peck at me. Ah! I tried my best to fight back. I hit it exactly when it swooped down, causing it to freak out. I'm out of here. The bird flew off. Ha! Take that. Hey, thanks for helping me out there. Of course. Us sea creatures have to stick together, right? Hey, why are you out here in the middle of nowhere? Well, I'm the only one left in my family. Our sunken ship home got raided by a sea monster. He took everything, even our diamond tooth. Wait, you guys have the diamond tooth? If I help you take him down, do you think I can have it? Absolutely. My name's Sheldon. Follow me this way. On day four, Sheldon and I swam our way through the ocean until we reached a large sunken ship inside of it. Whoa, you used to live here? Precisely. But be warned, the scary beast now lives inside. That doesn't sound scary at all. Okay, wish me luck. I swam swam my way through. I was able to make my way inside of a lost treasure room. At the other end of it lied the diamond tooth. Score! Just then, a large sea monster emerged from the depths. An intruder? You must die! No! The sea monster charged in and started to attack. His bites did a lot of damage to me, but thanks to my shark-like reflexes, I was able to dodge around. I tried my best to fight back. But at the end of the day, I was just too weak. I need to get stronger. Wait, the diamond tooth. I dodged the monster's attack and started to swim towards it. No! I managed to pick it up, and something strange started to happen. I gained five hearts, grew larger in size, and my diamond teeth grew out to be a lot sharper than before. I now could do a fierce bite attack. Awesome! The monster charged in. I bit the monster extremely hard, which caused its defeat. Take that. Whoa, you look way stronger. Though, I'm a little sad to see my home turned into something like this place. Don't worry, Sheldon. I think I have an idea. On day five, I brought Sheldon over to a large coral cave. This place is perfect. Using the materials we took from the sunken ship, I was able to craft myself some stone tools. From there, Sheldon and I went out and gathered lots of materials to make our very own own shark base. With my new friend's help, we were able to make ourselves a nice little home. I knew we would have enemies down the line, so I built out the shark entrance to resemble a shark's face. Because I just acquired the diamond tooth, I added sharp teeth to it to scare off any intruders. This place is gonna come along great. Just then, a white flash spread throughout our entire base, and the diamond goddess was there. Hey! This space will do. I will be here to help you on your journey, Shark. I can see that you have acquired the diamond tooth. All that's left now is the diamond gill, the diamond fin, the diamond eye, and the diamond heart. Great. How hard can that be? Suddenly, a small fish swam into our cave. Who are you? Please, sir, help us. Our home, it's being destroyed. Okay, okay. Calm down and show me where. On day six, I followed the fish until we reached a small fish town. Be afraid. I am the alpha predator. <laughs> I watched as a saltwater crocodile chased throughout the town, hurting its people just for fun? Hey, knock it off! 
What is this? A diamond shark? You think you're stronger than me, don't you? I never said that. You didn't have to. I'll show you who the strongest sea creature really is. The crocodile then charged in and began to attack. Uh, cut it out. It didn't listen though and would bite at me any chance it had. So I used my new bite and was able to put up a fight. He was too strong though. Ah, uh, I need help. Just then, a mermaid emerged from one of the homes and started to fight with me. Stay back! With the mermaid's help, we were able to catch the crocodile by surprise, causing him to leave. I'll let this slide for now, but soon enough, you'll find out who the strongest really is. Hey, uh, thanks for the help there. You are the one who came in and defended my home. That was brave. Thank you. Of course. I'm glad to see that the rumors are true. The diamond shark is real. You know, my merfolks have possession over a diamond artifact. The Diamond Gill. Because you saved my home, I would like to repay you the favor and take you there. On day seven, the mermaid brought me over to her mermaid kingdom. The Scales Towers. Trespasser! He's with me, genius. Fine, but if you try anything, I will turn you into shark stew! Okay, noted. We went through the kingdom until we reached a main throne room. Inside of it was a large mermaid king. My name is King Kong. Oh, now what brings you here? I am in need of the diamond gill. I was told that you can give it to me. <laughs> we wouldn't just give it to you. Here, follow me. I followed the king, and he showed me how his kingdom was ruined. My empire was once before beautiful, but then it was all ruined by those evil scuba divers. But there is a way to return it to its former glory. Oh yeah? How so? Find me the coral essence that lies deep within the caverns of Lost. If you find it and bring it to me, then I will exchange it for the diamond gift. Okay, it sounds like you've got yourself a deal. On day eight, I followed the king's instructions until I was able to find the entryway of the caverns of Lost. Let's hope I don't get lost. I started swimming through, but I accidentally swam above a patch of magma blocks. Oh no, I'm stuck. I got sucked down below and started to take damage from the blocks. Using all of my strength, I was able to break free. Ah, uh, that was close. I calmed down and noticed far ahead of me lied the coral essence. I quickly swam over to it and heard a huge echo throughout the cave. Caves just do that, right? Deciding to ignore it, I turned my attention back to the essence and picked it up. Because of this, I got trapped inside of the room and the worst thing that could happen to a shark took place. The entire room drained. I was now vulnerable on the floor. What am I gonna do now? On days 9 to 10, I was losing heart and fast. I need to find a way to get out of here. I started to hop around trying to find an exit, but there was no way out. I thought it couldn't get any worse, but oh, was I wrong. A coral guardian dropped down in front of me. A thief, one that will pay the consequences. You don't understand. I need it. Shut up. The guardian became angry and began to attack. Because I was on land, I was much slower slower than before, but I knew I still had some fight in me. The guardian kept hitting and I kept biting. I knew that it was either me or him. And with one final bite, he was down for the count. Because of this, water filled up within the room again and the entryway opened. Ah, thank goodness. On days 11 to 12, I brought back the coral essence to the mermaid king. Perfect. The king then swam down below his castle and placed the essence on top of a root platform. Then it began to spin around the coral wildly. Suddenly, the entire kingdom was transformed and now back to its full former glory. Whoa, now this is a mermaid kingdom. Because of you, Diamond Shark, my kingdom is revived. Here, follow me. The king brought me back to his throne and handed me the diamond gill. Because of this, I began to transform. I gained five hearts, felt way stronger, and my diamond skin hardened. Whoa, what just happened? I believe with that, you are now allowed to breathe. 
not just in water, but in air. This would have been helpful yesterday, but better late than never. Thank you. No, Diamond Sharp. Thank you you. On days 13 to 14, I was making my way back home when I heard a loud ship horn go off in the distance. What the? I surfaced above water and noticed a large outpost being built by the shoreline. What can that be? Using my new air breathing ability, I was able to jump on the shoreline. Okay, time to hop. I hopped throughout the shoreline, but it Felt so weird. I reached a clearing right next to their outpost. It was surrounded by evil scuba divers, and standing before them was Atomic. Yes, keep building. This will be our new headquarters, and that ocean will be ours. Sir, yes, sir. Soon enough, our weaponry will be able to take out those creatures. No problem at all. Weapons? What weapons? I wanted to rush in, but I knew that I wasn't strong enough yet. I decided to go further into their base to investigate. I jumped on further until I found a room that was holding a bunch of strange octopi. Oh man, I feel so weak. Oh my goodness. I have to save them. I went around to their cage and broke them free. A diamond shark? What are you doing on land? No time. Let's escape before it's too late. On days 15 to 16, I brought the octopi back to base. I could tell they were feeling much better now. With the help of Sheldon, we went throughout our home and made them their very own houses to live in. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much. We never felt so safe. Afterwards, Sheldon and I made a nice farm for all the people who lived here. We knew as time went on, the more and more our community would grow. I then added on the gills to my diamond shark statue. He was looking better and better by the day. Hey, diamond shark, we really do love it here. I just wish Roger were here to see it. Roger? Who's that? He's our friend. But he was separated from us and taken on a cruise ship. They plan to turn him into a nice octopus cuisine. He apparently knew about a diamond fin of some sort. And the scuba divers did not like that. He knows where the diamond fin is? I need to find him. If you tell me where that cruise ship is heading off towards, maybe I can go and save your friend before it's too late. On days 17 to 18, I set off in search of the cruise ship. I was told it was heading towards a tropical island east of my base. I swam and eventually was able to find it, slowly making its way through the ocean. Great. How am I supposed to get on that thing? I swam around, trying to find a way inside, and thankfully, the back end of it had water pouring from its edges. I used it and was able to climb on the deck. Okay, Diamond Shark, just act natural. Oh my goodness, it's a shark! Jump overboard! Ah! Well, that backfired. I hopped throughout the deck, scaring everyone in sight. Oh my goodness! Honey, jump! Leave the cats! Yeah, yeah, get over it! Eventually, I was able to make it inside and spotted the kitchen. Score! Oh, I cannot wait to make you into calamari! So tasty! <laughs> Who is that? Wee oui, wee, oui, I love this gig! Those scuba men capture the animals, and I get to have dinner! So perfect! I don't think so! I jumped in and was now face to face with the chef. A shark? Actually, no, my next meal. On days 19 to 20, the chef and I started to fight. I thought this was gonna be easy, but he used his wooden spoon to shoot food at me? Ah, cut it out! <laughs> Taste my five star cuisines! Five stars? Yeah, right! Because I said this, the chef got even more mad. I started to fight back and slowly but surely lured him back over to the main deck. He swung one last time and I I dodged it. Then I was able to bite him and knock him off the edge. No! Ha! See you later! I made my way back over to the kitchen and let Roger out of his cage. Oh my goodness, you saved me. Thank you so much. Of course. Your friends told me about you. They're gonna be happy to know that you're okay. They also mentioned that you may know about the diamond fin. Yeah, I do. I was roaming around one time and I spotted it. However, another type of shark picked it up. He did? 
can you show me where? One sec. The octopus then picked up an empty piece of paper from the kitchen and threw it on the floor. Then, using his ink, he drew out a map. Whoa! Just follow this, and it will take you exactly where you need to go. On days 21 to 23, I sent Roger back to my cave and followed the map. It took a while, but eventually, I was able to make my way to an icy tundra ocean. <laughs> it is so cold! I swam through and eventually found myself in the middle of an ice over den? Wait, a shark lives here? Not just any shark. THE shark. Whoa, a hammerhead. Listen, I heard you have the diamond fin, and I need it to help all of us. Ha! Why would you be our savior? I'm more than capable and more worthy. Come on. You know, it isn't about who's capable. Can't we just talk this out? Shark to shark? No. If you wish to take the diamond fin from me, then you must best me in a competition. Whoever wins keeps the diamond fin. Okay, Hammerhead, you are on. What is this competition? The Hammerhead signaled me to follow him, and I did. We then reached a starting point to a racing course. Beat me in this race, and the fin is yours. But beware, Diamond Shark. I'm the fastest of them all. On days 24 to 26, the race was about to begin. Yeah, this does not look like the safest race course. Are those? Yeah, they're water mines left by those horrible scuba divers. But turns out they make a very interesting race course. Get ready to lose. Three, two, one, go. Wait, the race begun. And even though it was dangerous, I knew that I had had to win. <laughs> You are supposed to save us sea creatures? I played the race slow and steady, but at this rate, I was going to lose. That was until the hammerhead swam so fast that he accidentally swam into two mines at once. Watch out! This caused a huge explosion. No! I swam over to see if he was okay, but all that I was met with was a blocked off icy cave entrance. Hello? Hey! Please, someone help! Oh no, he's in trouble! Hold on! On days 27 to 30, I was able to swim around the cave and find an alternative route in. As I entered, I heard a loud screech emerge from the cave tunnels. We are not alone. Hammerhead, uh, does this mean I won the race? Nothing? I swam throughout the tunnels, trying to find him anywhere. That's when I finally found him in an open room, being attacked by an ice wraith. <laughs> this be my hunted cave? <laughs> ah, help me! Hold on! I swam in and started to defend my fellow shark. The wraith's attacks were tough. But I knew if we worked together, we could take it down. With one more bite, the ice wraith was down. Ha! We did it. No, you did. You saved my life. Maybe you were right. Maybe you are meant to save this ocean. Just then, the hammerhead threw me over the diamond fin. I absorbed it, which caused me to upgrade. My fins grew much stronger, and I now swam way faster. Awesome! On days 31 to 35, I made it back to base with the hammerhead. Thanks for bringing me with you. My area was way too dangerous and cold. No worries. From there, I went over and built him a nice ice-themed house. I made sure that the entrance was wide enough to fit, well, uh, his head. Hey, watch it. Uh, sorry. From there, I went to the main entryway and upgraded my shark head by adding a nice, fierce-looking fin. Fozo, there you are. I'm very pleased with your progress. I see you only need two more diamond artifacts. That's right. Then Atomic is down for the count. Bozo! Oh, looking good. I just wish I came here with better news. Oh no, what's wrong? My acquaintances have reported to me that the saltwater crocodile is back at it. He has been terrorizing more and more ocean creatures by the day. That doesn't sound good. We need to put a stop to him, fast. 
His last location was apparently at an eel village, not too far from here. If that's the case, then it's time to pay him a visit. On days 36 to 38, I arrived at an eel village, only to see it was in complete devastation. Everything was destroyed, and all of the eels were sad. Uh, this sucks! I wandered through it until I heard a small, scared voice. My home. My beautiful home. Who is that? Oh my, a baby eel. Ah, don't hurt me like that dumb crocodile did. He, he took me away from my family and destroyed my home. I'm so sorry. That sounds horrible. Just then, a large whoosh sounded off behind me. But when I turned around, there was nothing there. Um, hello? Then, from my side, I was bit by the crocodile. Ah! I noticed that he was a lot larger than before. Oh, no. Oh, well, well, well. If it isn't the diamond shark, we meet again. Yes, we do. I am here to put an end to all of this. I'd like to see you try. I was about to charge in, but out of nowhere, he swam back and shot me with something. Ah, what was that? that my way to defeat you <laughs> oh no everything went blurry on days 39 to 41 i awoke inside of a large saltwater swamp area Ah, what happened? He trapped us, Fozo. We are done for. From the cage, I looked around his home and saw a bunch of bones and a book. What is that supposed to be? Oh no, we have to find a way out of this cage. Now, just then, the crocodile showed his face before us. Just a few more hours and those scuba divers will take care of you. Wait, what? You're working for those maniacs? Why? Oh, Diamond Shark, you don't understand the bounty they have over your head. If I bring you to them, then I can benefit from it greatly. No, stop. You can't trust them. They'll betray you. The crocodile. But I didn't listen though. Wow. I guess you'll never truly prove you're stronger than me then, huh? What did you say? What are you doing? Play along. Yeah, you heard me. You give me up to those men, you will never really know. From the way I see it, you are doing this because you are scared to fight me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you heard me. The crocodile then swam so fast at the cage that he destroyed it. Forget the bounty. Let's fight to the death. On days 42 to 44, the crocodile and I began our fight. Usually, I had an advantage in open water, but because we were fighting in close quarters, this fight was a lot more challenging. You're in my terrain now. He hit me out of the water and continued to attack. Ah! I did everything I could to fight back, but he just felt like he was still too strong for me. Oh no. Just then, my new eel friend yelled out from the water. Lure him back in. Okay, here goes nothing. I started to run back to the water, and he was chasing right after me. Get back here! I jumped in, and he followed closely behind. As soon as he jumped inside, the eel started to help me by zapping him with its electric powers. Ah! Whoa, thanks! Together, the eel and I were overwhelming the crocodile. No! No! He was down. Hopefully with him gone, we can have a better chance against Atomic. I then looked back at the book I saw earlier and decided to pick it up. What is this? It's a deal, crocodile. You bring me that diamond shark and I will reward you greatly. You better capture him by the time my men are done with that diamond lighthouse. The diamond lighthouse? Oh, that place. I know all about it. You do? Yeah, it is said to hold a special diamond artifact known as the diamond eye. Huh. Okay, I need to go there as soon as possible. From the sound of things, it's already packed with Atomic's men. Don't worry, Fozo. I will tell you where you need to go. On days 45 to 47, I sent the baby eel back home and followed her instructions to the Diamond Lighthouse. 
Whoa, this has to be it. We gotta keep searching, man. Searching? They have to be looking for the diamond eye. I swam closer, but made sure to keep my distance. Just then, Atomic himself walked out into the opening. Men, you guys need to fix this lighthouse now! Sir, we're trying our best and- What did you say? Do you not understand? All of your useless searching doesn't matter. Once this lighthouse is fixed, we will find the diamond eye. Uh, sir, yes, sir. Wait, so if I want the diamond eye, I have to fix the lighthouse. But how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> Those dumb fishermen people, don't they know that a lighthouse needs light in order to work? Who are you? Oh, me? I'm just an old grumpy turtle. I used to admire the shot of the lighthouse every day until one day its light just shut off. If you can tell me how to, I can go and fix it for you. Well, you scary old sharky you, I may know exactly where you can find a new light source inside the magma trench. On days 48 to 50, I swam around the nearby shoreline until, aha, found it. In front of me lied a large magma trench. Okay, Fozo, just keep swimming. I swam inside of it until it got foggier and foggier. A light source is gonna be down here? I swam through the fog and couldn't find anything. Ah, this is so frustrating. Just then, I spotted a light far off in the distance. Wait, there it is. I got closer and closer and the orb just became larger. Aha! Now, just to collect it. I was about to touch it, but then I realized something wasn't right. Is that breathing? Oh my goodness! A nice little anglerfish! <laughs> fish started to bite at me and attack. Uh, stay back. The fish wasn't listening and just wanted me dead. Okay, enough of this. I used my newly found swimming speed to my advantage and swam around the angler fish, confusing it. Then, while confused, I would bite at it from the sides. Take that. The angler fish couldn't keep up and with one more hit, it was down for the count. Because of this, it dropped a light orb. Hopefully with this, the lighthouse can work again and give me the diamond eye. On days 51 to 53, I swam back up from the trench. Okay, now I need to figure out how to get past these men. I looked around and noticed that Atomic was gone. Well, at least I have that to work with. I waited for men to move past the shores, and once the timing was right, I hopped on the land. Okay, next up, the top of the lighthouse. I snuck past their camp and made it to the stairway. Hop after hop, I made it up the stairs, but out of nowhere, a seagull started to fly at me. Ow! Hey, back off! Ooh, a fish! I'm a shark, you idiot! Hey, guys, you hear something? Oh, my... Um, hi. Diamond Shark, he's up there! Get him! Oh no! I hopped faster and was able to reach the top in time. Come on, come on! Please work! I put the light orb on the lighthouse, and because of this, the entire thing began to transform. The lighthouse's light was now fully operating again. A light beamed out and shot towards the southeast. Wait. It's showing me where the diamond eye is. I was about to make my way down, but notice the men were on their way up. Oh no, I'm trapped. On days 54 to 56, I was stuck on top of the lighthouse. I looked over the edge and the fall down looked very long. Hurry before he gets away. I guess I really don't have much of a choice. Okay, here goes nothing. Ah! Thankfully, I barely hit the water. Thank goodness. Clark, jump after him. What? No way. Just do it. Okay. Ah! All right. 
right? I'll just take the stairs. While they were busy, I knew that I had to follow where the light pointed off towards. I swam off southeast and noticed a diamond looking door that was opened. Is this a sanctuary of some sorts? I entered inside and waiting on a pedestal was the diamond eye. Perfect. I swam over and was about to get it when out of nowhere, I got blasted aside. Ah! Scuba divers all filled the room and I was now surrounded. We finally done it. The diamond shark is ours. Just as I thought all hope was lost, they were all blasted aside by one of their own men. What the? Diamond shark, quick, follow me if you want to live. On days 57 to 59, I followed the strange scuba diver back to an underwater hideout of some sorts. Who are you? And why did you help me? My name is Steve, and let's take cover first. We did as he said, and eventually swam into his home. Inside of it was a family? This is my wife and son. We're all hiding out to remain safe. Listen, Shark, I am truly sorry for my actions and for the actions of the rest of the scuba team. Why? Why apologize now? Atomic, he's gone too far. It's cruel and he needs to be stopped. I agree, but the diamond eye, I couldn't grab it in time. Scuba Steve then threw the eye right before me. Wait, how did you- I'm full of surprises. Thanks. I walked over and absorbed the eye. Because of this, I began to upgrade. I gained five more hearts and felt way tougher than before. I noticed that I now had diamond laser eyes. Awesome. Of course, you'll need to be at your strongest to stop him because I promise you, he's going to stop at nothing. But why? There has to be a reason. Before Atomic went down this path, he had a son. His son was obsessed with the ocean and always wanted to go out and explore. And well, Atomic did that for him. But something tragic happened. His son fell overboard and the sea creatures within it killed him. Atomic now will do whatever he can to take full control of the ocean for his son and destroy everything that would hurt him. Oh my. Well, we have to fight back. None of this is right. Just then, we heard nearby sounds of explosions. The scuba men, they aren't far. Come on, your family is not safe here. On days 60 to 62, I brought Scuba Steve and his family back home at my base. As I entered, I noticed that the baby eel I saved earlier had a new home as well. This place rocks. I'm glad you like it. I then went out and got the right amount of materials to make the scuba family a house to stay in. I even made sure to hollow it out from the inside so that they can breathe. Thank you, Fozo. Of course. After I finished, I went out and added eyes to my shark entrance. And just like that, he is looking like a real shark now. Uh, are those scuba divers in our home? Yes, they are, but it's okay. He saved my life. They are good people. Okay, if you say so. I see you have all your diamond upgrades, young one. And rest assured, I know you can do the last one. The diamond Heart. You do? How? Why tell you when I can show you? Follow me. On days 63 to 66, the water goddess brought me deep underground. Where are we going? Patience, Fozo. Patience. We then reached a large, lush underwater cavern, and inside of it was a tall, diamond locked passageway. Whoa. After a second glance, though, I realized something was wrong with it. The entryway is decayed because of those horrible men and their mission. It must be fixed. And when it is, I shall bring you to no other than the Diamond Ocean itself. Diamond Ocean? How am I supposed to fix it? By finding the sacred aura wand. With its touch, this passageway shall be opened, but I fear it is in the wrong hands. Oh no, Atomic has it, doesn't he? Precisely! You must go find Atomic's headquarters and steal that wand back. On days 67 to 70, I had to go back towards Atomic's headquarters. I swam my way there, and when I arrived, I was in complete shock. His headquarters was fully built. Oh my. 
Concentrate, Fozo. I gathered my thoughts and slowly but surely snuck my way through the base. There were men guarding it everywhere, but thankfully... Two sheep, three sheep. They were sleeping on duty. Perfect. I managed to find a locked entryway that looked like a trophy room. Oh, come on. It has to be in here. I kept trying to enter when I got hit from behind. Ah! I turned around only to see a large guard keeping watch. Oh, boy. You are done for. The guard charged in and started to attack. Thankfully, though, I had my laser eyes. I shot at him with them, and it pushed him back a lot. With one more shot, he was done for. Whoa, these new eyes are awesome. The guard dropped a key, and with it, I was able to open the door and head inside the trophy room. On day 71 to 76, I was searching around inside of Atomic's trophy room, and there were horrible things everywhere. Shark teeth? Bones? His trophies are his kills. What a monster! Come on, where can that wand be? Wake up, you idiots! Who's guarding the treasure? Oh no, Atomic, he's here. I have to hurry. I tried my best and thankfully was able to find a very mystical looking staff. This is it, the Aurora wand. I picked it up and was ready to leave when- Oh, Diamond Shark. So nice of you to come all the way here just to die. You know, your son would be ashamed of you. What did you say? Atomic was fueled with rage, and I knew deep down I was not strong enough at all to stop him. Out of instinct, I used the wand. With him being stunned, I knew it was time to go and jumped out to escape. Mark my words, I will get you! On day 77 to 83, I made my way back to the entry room with my newly found wand. Okay, let's hope this works. I used it, which caused the entire entryway to heal back to its former glory. Because of this, the entire room began to shake. Uh, what's going on? The doorway opened, and I swam through, only to find myself in a different kind of ocean. Whoa. The floors were made out of pure diamond, and everything felt so infinite. This place is amazing, but where am I supposed to go? Follow your heart. My heart? Okay, Fozo, trust it. I trusted my instinct and started to travel through. After a while of swimming, I came across a large diamond temple. This has to be it. I could feel it. I entered, and right in the center of it lied none other than the diamond heart. On days 84 to 90, I began to swim my way to the diamond heart. When out of nowhere, the diamond goddess emerged before me. Bozo, here it is. Your last diamond artifact. Yeah, I was about to grab it and... Not quite yet. All of this time, I've been training you, building you up, just to see if you are worthy. But, you see, there is one more final trial to all of that. Okay, and what's that? The diamond goddess then began to attack me. Ah! Oh no. If you wish to attain the last diamond, you must beat the goddess of diamond herself. I swam around the water, doing my best to avoid her hits. You couldn't have at least warned me? You must deem worthy. Fight back. You want me to fight back? Fine. I swam around her and started to bite at her every chance I could. But I knew that I had to find a weakness. And thankfully, I found one. Every time she attacked, she had a cooldown. Okay, Fozo. Now, the goddess shot out an attack. And I knew I had to hit her with everything I had. I did and kept attacking each hit harder and harder. Because of this, the diamond goddess struck down and admitted defeat. You 
Bozo, you are worthy. Excellent work. She floated away from the diamond, and I went over to absorb it. I gained 10 more hearts and grew larger in size. Now that I have all five diamonds, I knew that it was time to take down Atomic. On days 91 to 94, I made it back home to base. I took a second to look at everything I'd fully built up and a sense of pride filled within me. From there, I went off and made up a nice pillar in the center of our cave to resemble the diamond heart. Perfect. I then looked over at the diamond goddess's shrine and noticed that she was gone. Thank you for everything. Fozo, it's getting bad out there. Atomic, his plan, is finally executing on it. He is hurting a large fish city as we speak. Not if I have anything to say about it. It's time to end this. On days 95 to 99, I swam out far until I reached the large destroyed fish city. I watched as countless scuba divers were swimming through the area, hurting a bunch of different sea creatures. They now had very powerful weaponry by their side. Just as Sheldon said, their plan, they were executing it. I looked past the city, and Atomic was on some sort of platform, giving orders. Yes, yes, clear this area out. I have to stop this. Now, I swam in and started to fight off the scuba divers. Kill the diamond shark! They had high-tech weapons, but with my increase in strength, I was able to take most of them down with ease. We fought back and forth, but with one final shot with my laser eyes, they were all down for the count. I looked forward, and Atomic noticed. It looks like it's just you and me. On day 100, I swam up and was now face to face with Atomic. Your plan is over. You filthy, stupid animal. You guys have taken everything from me and I won't stop until I do the same. Atomic rushed in and began to attack. His hits hurt a lot. I did my best to swim around and fight back. Look, I know that your son was taken from you, but that doesn't mean you have to hurt everyone. Shut up! It's not too late to stop this. Please, stop! Atomic didn't though. And at this point, I knew it was either me or him. I'm sorry, but I have to. I started to swim around faster and hit harder. I would gain distance and shoot him with my eyes. No, no! With one final blast, I took down Atomic. With him gone, all sea creatures can finally live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as a baby diamond lion. I was inside my lion kingdom with all my fellow lions roaming around staring at me. The diamond lion is finally here. Ready to redeem us. Redeem? What do you mean? Just then, bombs started to go off all throughout our home. My people started to panic, and some even died. No! What's happening? In one large blast, a group of nasty-looking swamp creatures entered our kingdom. For years, our people have been forced to live in the deadly cursed swamps. Treated like nothing! This changes now! In the name of Argo! What? Argo's men started to run through and attack my people. They tried to fight back, but they were not strong enough. Leave my people alone! I looked off at the far end of the battlefield, only to see their main leader fighting with my king. Oh no, I have to help! On day two, I ran throughout the battlefield until finally reaching another area. I watched as my king fought the large beast, doing everything he could to defend us. You have had this coming for too long. Soon your entire empire will burn to the ground and mine will rise over it. With one final hit, my king was gravely injured. Ah! No! Now you can watch your entire empire crumble before you, just like I did. Argo walked away, leaving my king to die. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Our sacred 
Diamond Lion, I was afraid this day would come. It is up to you, boy, to grow up and be the strongest among us. You must save our kingdom. Up to me? But how? The lion didn't answer and threw me over a diamond artifact. <coughs> I don't have time. Use your instincts. Follow the artifact. Then all your questions will be answered. I believe in you. The king lion died. Oh my goodness. I can't let him down. On day three, I listened to my king and left to follow the item. I was trying to leave the immediate area, but there were countless swamp goblins walking around everywhere. Search for any remaining lions. Put them in cells. There's no way I'm gonna make it out of here. They're all on guard. Just then, a feeling rose within my body, allowing me to see nearby people through blocks. Whoa, I have diamond powers? I use my newfound ability, carefully walking throughout the battlefield and avoid their detection. I thought I was home free, but then a goblin came out of nowhere and spotted me. Aha! Stupid arrogant lion. You shall join the others in your nil prison. He rushed in and began to attack. He had very deadly weaponry, and I knew that I had to run. Oh no, you don't! After him! On day four, I was running through the forest as fast as I could. They could be right behind me. Just then, something began to happen to the artifact, causing a burst of light to shine through the jungle. Whoa! I followed the lighting path until finally I reached a large aged over temple entrance. He went this way! Oh no! I rushed in, only to reveal an abandoned savanna ruins. Why was I sent here? There you are! You thought you could escape us? Wait, please! The goblins all rushed in, but were quickly stopped when a loud noise began to surround the area. Rocks then began to move behind me? What is that? <laughs> On day five, the giant deadly golem began to attack all of us. He slammed his giant fists on the ground and I did my best to try to avoid him. The goblins though, began to fight back, hitting him with their swords and axes. But unfortunately for them, they were all wiped out in one fell swoop. Whoa. Yeah, the diamond lion. Wait, uh, you know who I am? Yes, I do. It seems as if the day has finally arrived. Argos' takeover has begun. Who is he? His people have been doing everything they can to kill me. The goblins used to live in peace with everyone. But your king hurt Argo and changed him forever. But what happened, I don't know. Well, I need to stop them. They are hurting my people. Agreed. If Argos' plan succeeds, all hope will be lost. My name is Gorm. As a golem, it is my sole purpose to keep balance in the land. Nice to meet you, Gore. I'm Bozo. Build up a safe den, Then I shall grant you great power. On day six, Gore tasked me to build up my very own lion den. I went to work by getting myself enough materials to make a set of stone tools. Perfect. I then used them to build up a home within the Savannah ruins. It's not much yet, but it's a start. Excellent. Now I shall grant you this. He then charged up and shot a very powerful blue beam in front of me. Ah! From his blast, summoned an ancient diamond rune stone. Whoa! Out of pure instinct, I went up and touched it, causing my body to change. I grew larger in size, gained five more hearts, and now had an amazing diamond roar ability. This caused shards of diamond to shoot out of my mouth. Awesome! But because of this, something strange happened and my vision went blurry. Ah! Where am I? I looked forward and saw a village full of the goblins, but they all looked so happy and peaceful. And is that? Correct. That is awful. Or at least it was. 
I watched as Argo was filled with excitement, running through his village's streets. He was very optimistic and friendly to all of his fellow citizens, but he was also an explorer. He ventured out far from his village all of the time, until one day, he found some place huge. Wait, my Lion Kingdom! This place is beautiful. Argo's happiness quickly got interrupted by a loud roar behind him. Ah! Ah! Wait, what just happened? Was that a vision? Correct. It seems as though each of these rune stones hold the truth of Argo and his goblins past. This can be how we stop him. The more of these you collect, the more you find out. And the stronger I will become. I will do whatever it takes to stop him and save my people. Good, because I know exactly where you can find the next rune stone. The monkey tribe. On day seven, I followed Gore's instructions, venturing deep within the jungle, looking for monkeys? They shouldn't be too far from here. Out of nowhere, I heard rustling coming from the trees above me. Oh no. Just then, a group of monkeys dropped down surrounding me. Uh, hi? A lion in our territory? Attack them, boys! The monkeys all rushed in and began to fight. Hey, cut it out! I shot them with my new diamond roar which hurt them a lot, but they just kept swarming me in large numbers. All right, all right, stop it! You should have known better than to come here. We will take you to our leader so he can deal with you directly. The monkeys escorted me through the forest until we reached a very weak looking hideout. And on the other end of it was the king monkey himself. On day eight, I was face to face with the king of monkeys. Hello, I was sent here in search of a diamond runestone. Silence, lion. Can you not see I have other matters to attend to? I looked around and quickly noticed that all of the monkeys here looked very sick and weak. After Argo took down your lion's kingdom, he went for mine next. Thankfully, a few of us were able to escape, but the majority of my people are now gone. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. I then looked past the king and saw none other than the second rune stone. Look, I need that. I promise I will use it to help stop Argo. Not without a price. Take a look around. All of my people are sick, and it's because they do not have their sacred bananas that my kingdom held. If you go, sneak into my kingdom, and find a banana plant, I shall trade it for this rune stone. You have yourself a deal. On days 9 to 10, I arrived at the Monkey's Jungle Empire, and it was in complete ruins. There were goblins everywhere, and were clearly taking all of the kingdom's resources. My people! Oh no, Argo is here? We have claimed both the lions and the monkey's empires, but there is still a great threat amongst us. The Diamond Lion! Wait, he knows about me? Find that lion and bring him to me. Our plans cannot stop until we are on top of the species! That's not good. I gotta find that sacred banana plant fast. I use my diamond vision to scout out the patrolling goblins and slowly sneak around them into a ruined building. Once inside, I saw the sacred banana plant sitting on top of a giant dead tree? Uh, okay. Now, just to collect this and get out of here. But surprisingly, as I got close to the plant, it jumped. Ah! <laughs> What the? A plant then started to move its tiny legs and run throughout the kingdom. <laughs> Wait, get back here. On days 11 to 12, I was chasing the plant throughout the ruins. Our chase led us into a tunnel that went underneath the forest. I was running as fast as I could until I finally began to catch up to him. Just as I thought I was about to catch the plant, he led me straight into a main room where two evil goblins were killed keeping guard. Oh no. Argo has big plans for you. Get him! Both of the goblins rush into attack as the banana plant ran to cower behind me. I charged in, meeting the goblins head on. Diamond against steel. They might have had the upper hand
again last time, but this time I had courage and strength. Rah! I used my diamond roar ability that hurt both the goblins, which made it easier for my claws to cut them both down. Yes! After dealing with the goblins, the banana plant seemed to calm down and walk up to me. I promise I don't mean you any harm. Now, come on, little guy. It's time I bring you home. On days 13 to 14, I made it back to the monkey tribe with the banana plant following behind me. Hey, look, I've brought what you asked. Whoa, oh, I totally forgot to mention that our banana plants come to life. Yeah, that would have been nice to know. I never thought I'd see the day a lion would help us out. But a deal's a deal. You may collect your precious rune stone. Thanks. I walked over to the diamond rune stone, and as I got close, it began to activate. I reached out and touched it, causing me to grow even more powerful. I gained five more hearts, and now I could summon diamond shrines up from the earth. Sweet! Because of this, everything started to get blurry as I began to enter another vision. The roar from before sounded off, causing the younger Argo to turn around frightened. But to his surprise, it was a young female lion. <laughs> I scared you. What? No, I, I wasn't scared. <laughs> Both the young lion and Argo began to bond, forming a friendship like no other. But not all people liked that. Wait, my king? This cannot stand. A lion with a goblin? The king's rage grew from within until one evening, Argo and the lion saw smoke coming from the distance. They both ran over, only to see Argo's entire home on fire and under attack. No, no! Ah! I left the vision confused. I need to know more. On days 15 to 16, I knew that the monkey shelter wasn't safe, so I brought the whole tribe back with me to my base. Thank you, Fozo. You have no idea how much this means. Of course. From there, I got enough materials to make them their very own monkey tree to stay in. Right after that, the monkeys began planting more of their banana plants. Here you guys go. I hope you like it. This is amazing! Great job, Fozo. For the first time in history, it seems as though the monkeys are getting along with you lions. Keep it up. That's the plan, Gore. Suddenly, while we were talking, I spotted a figure looking into our base. Hey, what gifts? Ah! The figure quickly ran off, but I wasn't going to let him get away. I chased him outside of the base and into a nearby forest. Get back here. Then, as I was chasing, I got hit by something. Ah, my head. My vision was going all fuzzy, and I couldn't focus on a thing. I started to pass out. Perfect. That was quick and on days 17 to 18, I woke up on a tall rock? Ah, where am I? Suddenly, I began to see bright flashes of light as I looked down to see people were taking pictures of me. Hey, kitty, kitty, look over here! Look this way, I'm trying to take a picture! Hey, stop that! Ah, I said, stop! Ah, a little kitty is scary now, run! As they scattered, I realized that I was trapped in a zoo? Oh no. Hey, cut it out. You're scared away the customers. You, you put me here. The treasure hunter didn't listen though and just walked away. Hey, get back here. That's right, my gem infused feline. I looked over to see that a penguin was in my enclosure. Who are you? The name's Skipper and I'm here to talk to you, my compadre. That treasure hunter loves capturing us animals so he can make money. And you're telling me this because? Well, me and my three associates have had a little escape plan in the works for a while now, and a diamond lion was just the piece we were missing. Perfect. I'll do anything to get out of this place. Count me in. On days 19 to 20, I followed the penguin as he led me under the zoo enclosures to a large operation room. 
Whoa, how did you build all of this? That's none of your concern. Kowalski, analysis. I looked up in the room to see three more penguins surrounding a table. We are a go on phase one. On phase two, Skipper. At a boy, Private. Now, I'd like you all to meet Fozo. Our answer to phase three. Whatever it takes to escape this place so I can find more diamond rune stones. Rune stones? Skipper, isn't that what that treasure hunter guy is after? Wait, what? Do you guys know where it is? Whoa, hold your horses. We'll tell you what we know after we escape. Okay, fair enough. I went back to the surface with the penguins, awaiting for the plan to start. Then, in one large explosion, my cage was busted open. Okay, here goes nothing. On days 21 to 23, the penguins and I were running through the panicking crowds at the zoo. <laughs> This way, we planned the perfect route. As we came around the last turn, I saw the exit. But standing there, blocking our path, was a strong-looking security guard. You pests! Get back to your cages! Now! This is where you come in. Take down the guard. What? Ah! The guard ran into attack, and he hit me with his electric weapon. Ow! The shock was so powerful that I felt it starting to slow down my body. I fought back as hard as I could, trying to attack him with my claws. But the guard was strong, and his attacks really started to take their toll on me. I have to get out of here. As he hit me back another time with his weapon, I used the opening to summon my diamond shrine from below, and he was defeated! Phew! That was close. We ran outside the gates of the zoo, and as we got a safe distance away, I turned towards the penguins. Okay, now will you tell me about the next rune stone? Sure. The hunter who captured you always talked about a mining site in the desert nearby. Kowalski's guess is that that's where the rune stone is. Thanks! And hey, if you guys need a place to stay, there's always room at my base. On days 24 to 26, I separated from the penguins and headed in the direction of the mining site. It took me a while, but up ahead, I started to see something big. The goblins! They were building up their large empire right in the middle of the plains. And at the center of all of this was Argo. Work, you lazy cats! Work! I saw that the entire area was filled with lions, and Argo was commanding all of them. This is horrible. My poor people. I then saw a young lion was hiding in some rubble, looking weaker than ever. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Get back to work. Oh no, I have to help. Hey, Argo. I ran into the empire, standing across from the massive swamp goblin. You. Finally showing your face. You will regret that. Listen to me. You need to stop this. It isn't right. Isn't right? You don't know the half of it. And you never will. Wait. Argo didn't listen though and rushed towards me. He attacked so fast that I couldn't even defend myself. You are trying to save them? Look at you. You're a joke, and you won't be here to see my plan succeed. Knowing I was surely done for, I had to escape. I started to run away with Argo chasing me. Thankfully, I found a small cave and was able to lose him. Run all you want. In time, you will be finished. On days 27 and 29, I exited the cave and found myself in the desert. Argo is way too strong for me. I have to find the next rune stone. I ventured forward until I saw a massive pyramid that had drills and mining equipment. Yes, this has to be the mining site. I started to move closer, but noticed that the place was crawling with miners. Oh no, I'm gonna have to stay quiet. Stupid miners and their stupid loud machines. What? What was that? I looked over and standing on top of the broken pyramid was a creature wrapped in cloth? Ah, hey, I didn't mean any trouble. I, I just didn't like how loud you guys are being. Hey, it's okay. I'm not one of the miners. I'm here for the diamond rune stone. Do you know where it is? Ah, uh, seems like we have a common enemy then. Well, you're in luck. 
I've been staying at this place for ages. I can show you where to go, but only if you help me. These miners are making a ton of noise, and I need a way quieter place to sleep. Deal. Did you have a specific place in mind? Ooh, I think I know just the tomb. On days 30 to 32, I was following the mummy as he lazily led me deep underneath the pyramid. Ah, here's the place. He brought me to a hallway that ended in a tall room where a massive tomb stood against the wall. Whoa. Pretty great, right? Only thing is, there's an evil mummy that won't be too happy I'm taking his bed. Evil mummy? Suddenly, the large tomb burst open and a tall pharaoh arose from his slumber. <laughs> To stop me. Oh no, the pharaoh charged forward and started to attack. He shot me with fire powers that blasted from the floor, but I wasn't going to give in. I started to summon more diamond shrines from the ground. Take that. We continued to fight, but I finally destroyed him with one final diamond roar. As he fell, he dropped a beautiful golden necklace. Wow, you really showed him. Now for some peace and quiet. The mummy walked past me and went into the tomb. Oh, and the diamond roadstone. If you head deep underground, the necklace should help you unlock the room it resides in. I walked over and picked it up. Uh, thanks. On days 33 to 35, I went deeper underneath the pyramid. Now, where is this room he was talking about? I entered a chamber, and across from me stood a giant doorway. It was covered in ancient sandstone with seemingly no way to open. All right, let's hope this works. I held out the pharaoh's necklace as it began to glow a golden light, pushing open the entrance. Awesome! I walked in, only for the room to reveal a very bright glow. Wait, the diamond runestone! I did it! I approached as the runestone activated just as the others, and it absorbed into me. I felt a surge of diamond energy as I grew in size again, causing me to gain five more hearts. Now, I could cause diamond chains to attack and trap my enemies. This is amazing! But before I could leave the room, my mind started to fade into another vision. I entered and saw Argo and the lion watching his village burn in the distance. My home! He charged in and looked around to see that everyone was gone. And at the center of it was the king lion himself. No! No! What are you doing? I will not have someone like you be near my people. You filthy goblins are infecting our lands, and I will put an end to it. Argo looked at the king, betrayed and confused. No, I won't let you! The younger Argo then rushed in and started to fight him. They were hitting each other blow for blow, but then the king unleashed a roar so powerful that a shockwave violently shot out towards Argo. Ah! I came back to my senses as the vision faded. My king, did he really burn down their village? No wonder they hate us. I have to make things right. Just then, I heard a loud noise as a large machine crashed through the wall. You! How did you escape the zoo? But no matter, the runestone you collected is mine! Oh no! On days 40 to 44, I started to battle with the treasure hunter and his giant machine. He drove it directly towards me as I jumped out of the way. I gotta stay away from it or it's gonna crush me! I tried to attack the treasure hunter, but he was being protected. He then charged at me, causing him to crash into a pillar. Wait a minute, I have an idea! I ran throughout the room, causing him to crash into the remaining three pillars. Once he destroyed the last one, the roof started to cave in. I then used my new diamond chain ability to hold him in place. No, 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 no! I did it! On days 45 to 47, I made it back safely to my base. The long journey gave me time to think about what I needed to do. I need to show Argo and everyone that all lions aren't evil. We can be different than the ones before us. Hey, compadre. I looked up to see the penguins also made it back safely. Hey, guys. You said we could stay here, right? Well, I had Kowalski draw up some plans for you. Show him, Kowalski. Kowalski then threw down to me a page of sketches. I think I can get started on this right away. I spent some time in the base, building them a nice icy home to stay in. Here you guys go. I hope you like it.
Bozo, come here, please. Gore? What is it? I walked up to the golem, but he seemed like he was very weak. Uh, what's going on? Bozo, please. It seems my brother is in some sort of danger. Your brother? Yes, for every golem like me has a sibling. They are connected through the earth. My brother is a golem of lava. And through that connection, we feel each other's pain. I feel he's growing weaker by the moment. Please, go and save him. I'll do whatever I can to save you, Gore. Whatever it takes. On days 48 to 50, I followed Gore's directions until I was met with a large entrance that led down deep to a strange looking lava cave. It has to be here. I ventured deep down until I found myself in a large opening. In the center of it was a huge lava golem. But just like Gore said, he was not looking so good. You, are you okay? Diamond's lion. I, I have heard lots about you. No, I'm growing weaker by the second, for I lack my necessary fuel. I then realized that all of the lava that was supposed to be in the room wasn't here. You need your lava back. Uh, precisely. Goblins, they are the ones that took it. For what? Uh, I don't know, but if I don't get it back soon, I will surely be done for. I promise, I will go and help you get it back. On days 51 to 53, I hurried through the cave system looking to find any sign of what the goblins had done to the lava flow. What are you planning this time, Argo? As I approached a large opening in the caves, I saw that the river of lava was being held back by some sort of operation site. I have to get close and see what's going on. Moving closer in, I saw that goblins were using the lava flow to melt down and forge all sorts of weaponry and watching over all of the workers was none other than Argo. Yes, yes, keep up the work. We need these weapons made now. If that diamond lion is getting stronger, then so will we. Well, we are on it, Commander. We just only built this forge. It's gonna take a while. I don't want excuses. I want results. So get it done or else. He stormed away from the forge angrily as the scared goblins went back to work. I guess now is my chance. As the goblins were all focused on the weapons, I snuck into the forge and pulled down on a mechanism that caused the lava river to start flowing again. Bingo. Hey, who did that? You, it's the diamond lion, get him. A ton of the goblin smiths then started to run towards me. I better run. On days 54 to 56, I was running through the tunnels with the goblins chasing right behind me. I entered back into the main lava room, but to my surprise, all of it was now filled with lava. Yes, the golem noticed the goblins chasing me and shot out a very powerful lava attack directly at them. Whoa, thanks. No, thank you. You saved my life, folks. And for that, I shall grant you this. The golem then threw over a special mini rune stone. Whoa! I know you seek the sacred rune stones, and this mini stone shall take you straight to the next one. Good luck. He what? That diamond lion thinks he's doing what's right? I can't let him win. I can't! Uh, sir, I... Silence! I must prepare for plan B. I will stop him. For you. On days 57 to 59, I used the mini runestone as a compass and followed its directions to a large underground civilization. This place is beautiful. The whole city was coated in diamonds that shined like they were in the sunlight. And at the center of it was the fourth diamond runestone. Perfect. But before I could get to it, a few creatures made of diamond came out of their homes. Oh, wow. Aren't you a sight to behold? Yes, we don't get too many visitors here at all. I'm here for that runestone. I needed to stop Argo and his goblins. As I said this, the creatures all just looked at me and <laughs> laughed. <laughs> what a funny joke. 
Do you not understand how important that runestone is to us? No one who is unworthy can take it. Not even a diamond lion. What can I do to prove I'm worthy? To prove it to you all? Very well, lion. It's time to put you to the test. On day 60 to 63, I was led by the diamond people to the entrance of a massive diamond maze. If you want to prove yourself worthy, you must find your way to the heart of this maze. If you do that, you will be deemed one with the diamond. Sounds simple enough. Let's do it. I ran in, knowing I couldn't let my people down. I used all of my abilities at my disposal, even my diamond sight, to see a hidden passageway. I then reached a weak-looking wall and used my diamond roar to burst right through it. With that, I was finally able to make it to the center of the maze. I did it! But out of nowhere, I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, only to see that a massive diamond monster was looking over me. Uh-oh. <laughs> the monster and I charged towards each other as my diamond met his. We started hitting each other and I realized he was extremely strong. His attacks were starting to break me down again and again, but I knew I was just as strong and my diamond abilities were definitely taking their toll on him. I will prove to the diamond people and to everyone who the diamond lion really is. With a final loud diamond roar, I destroyed the monster. He, he did it. The diamond lion is one with the diamond. He is worthy. On day 64 to 68, I rushed back to the center of the diamond civilization to obtain the next runestone. I approached it and picked it up, causing my form to grow once again. I gained five more hearts, and now I could call down a huge diamond meteor to slam into my enemies. All right, just one more to go. Then, before I finished that thought, my sight shifted to another vision. Argo and the King Lion were still in his destroyed village. No, please! Suddenly, a figure jumped in front of Argo, being hit by the King's attack instead. What? No! No! Standing there, mortally wounded, was the female lion. Please, forgive us. There, in the burning goblin village, the lion died, and Argo grew sad. You, you caused this! What? I didn't! Enough! Your people are hereby banished from the swamps! Now leave before I kill you where you stand! I watched Argo leave without another word, as the king was left standing in his destroyed home. I regained my vision. No, I knew what I had to do. I need to find Argo and try to reason with him. The king was wrong, but that doesn't mean that others should have to pay the price. I have to make things right. On days 69 to 71, I went to the surface as fast as I could and headed back to Argo's empire. When I finally made it there, more buildings were complete and goblins were patrolling the whole area. There on top of a building was Argo. Argo, I've come to talk. Yeah. Look, I'm not here to fight. I came to tell you that I want things to be different for us lions, for all of us. We can change. Change? You lions had their chance, and your king ruined it. I know what happened, and it was wrong, but these people shouldn't pay the price for what our king did. It's too late. The lions and all the vile creatures of this world will soon know the ruin we knew in the swamplands, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Argo then charged forward, straight towards me. No! I called down my diamond meteor ability, stopping his attack. While he was stunned, I used the opportunity to escape out into the grassy plains. That's right. Run away. Run while you still can. On day 72 to 74, I returned to my base, tired and sad. Bozo. I looked up to see that Gore was back to full strength again. Yes, you're okay. I am. 
Well, thanks to you, we have some new friends I would like you to meet. Coming from the side of Gore's massive frame was a gross-looking rat. They came from the Swamplands, and he says he has some information for you. The Swamplands? That's where Argo is from. I see you're a bit on edge, uh, but my people, we need your help. What do you mean? You see, our elder, she has what you're looking for. The final diamond runestone. But in order to get it, you have to help us break the swamp's curse. The swamp has a curse? Fozo, they need you. All right, I don't like this, but I'll help you. Take me to your elder. On days 75 to 77, I followed the swamp rat until we finally reached the edge of the swamps. The whole area was foul smelling and didn't seem like a living soul was in sight. This place is horrible. People live here? Yeah, you can see why those goblins are filled with such hatred. Now, follow me. We pushed into the vile swamp until I saw buildings sunken in the murky dirt. This is your town? Our town. I looked around and saw multiple animals and creatures slowly decaying. And you haven't even seen the worst part. I then looked over to see an elderly goblin was standing there. So you run this place? Yes, child. Now come, we have much to discuss. I walked up the stairs and followed the elder into her hut, where inside was the final diamond runestone. Yes, I was about to walk up to it when the elder stopped me. Wait. Don't be so hasty, child. This swamp has been cursed for ages, and that curse has festered and grown into something that can affect this very runestone. It's cursed? Yes, but if you are able to find and wipe out the curse at its source, you will lift its effects on the land, its people, and the runestone. I'll do it. Where do I go? On days 78 to 80, I went deep into the swamplands trying to find the source of the curse. I searched until I came to an area where I saw a giant stony hand reaching out of the swamp and on top of it held a large green orb. This, this has to be it. I have to destroy that. I started to walk forward, but because of this, the orb initiated, summoning green cursed goblins around it. Oh no, I started a fight by summoning diamond shrines to strike down multiple at once. They were weak, but they just kept swarming. I have to break that curse. I used my feline agility to jump around them as I landed right next to the orb. Here goes nothing. I unleashed the most powerful diamond roar that I could, causing the entire orb to explode. Yes! This caused a large shockwave to travel throughout the swamp, killing the cursed goblins. I did it! Now, maybe the swamp creatures can live safely. On days 81 to 85, I went back to the swamp town, and I saw that the last diamond runestone was no longer cursed. You did it, Fozo. Thank you. Now please take the runestone. I walked up and touched it, causing it to be absorbed into me. I felt all of my diamond abilities grow in strength. As I grew in size one last time, I gained 10 more hearts, and now I was the strongest I ever was. My vision started to change as I was pulled away. Where am I? I see you found out the truth, young one. I looked up, and standing before me was the king lion. You, why did you hurt those goblins? Why did you do any of it? I was blinded, Fozo. Blinded by arrogance. By ego. I saw one of my own with a goblin. I couldn't help but feel anger. Well, look where that got us. Now Argo, he's pure evil. I have spent many years regretting my actions, wishing I could take that day back. Please, Fozo, do what you can to save those goblins. Right my wrongs. I will, I promise. As my sight became clear again, I was back inside the elder's hut. I looked around outside at all of the poor creatures who lived here and knew what I had to do.
On days 86 to 90, I led all the swamp creatures back to my base. I knew that if I wanted to change the lion's past, we had to treat everyone as our people. Welcome to our kingdom. From there, I went out and got enough materials to build all of these new creatures their very own homes. I looked around and could see how happy they have all become. Well done, Diamond Lion. Thanks. Now all that's left is dealing with Argo. He may be too far gone, but that doesn't mean his goblins are. It may be a challenging task, young one. But it's one that I'm gonna have to try. Everyone deserves a second chance. Us lions got one, so will those goblins. I had one final look at my new empire and knew it was time I put an end to all of this. On days 91 to 94, I arrived at Argo's Goblin Empire alone. As I got close, I saw that his grand kingdom was finished completely. I have to find my people. Hey, what was that? Oh no, I ran through the gates, starting to sneak between buildings to hide from all the goblins. They were everywhere, and I knew I couldn't get caught. I continued to move through Argo's empire until I saw a large area lined with cages of the lions. Please, we need food and water. Argo won't allow it. Now's my chance. Diamond Lion, what are you doing? Saving you all. Now stand back. I focused my powers and let out a powerful diamond roar. My attack completely shattered the front of the cages. Yes! <laughs> Thank you, Fozo. Of course. Now, let's get out of here. The lions and I tried escaping, but unfortunately, all of the goblins were right there waiting for us. On days 95 to 99, we were face to face with the whole goblin army. You are trying to escape? Never! The goblins were about to push in to attack. Wait! Everyone stopped at my words. I know that us lions were not kind to you guys in the past. And what we did, it was horrible. But I want to prove to all of you guys that we can change. I know for years now that you have been driven by nothing but rage. But look around. You aren't just hurting us. You're hurting innocent creatures who are losing their homes. They're people. Does that sound familiar? We're doing what's right. You are doing exactly what happened to you in the past. Join me, guys, and together we can create a better future for everyone. He is right. Yeah, we need to stop this. Excuse me. Out of nowhere, Argo slammed down into the ground in a rage. What is going on here? Every one of you stupid goblins, kill them. It's too late, Argo. Now stop this. I will destroy you all! On day 100, Argo started his reign upon all of us. He was a lot stronger now and killed any lion or goblin with complete ease. Argo, stop this! Never! I won't stop until all of you are gone! I will start my new empire over your ashes! No! I fought Argo back using all of my new diamond abilities I have acquired throughout my adventure. You didn't deserve what happened to you. We can change this. No! He slammed down really hard and took away most of my hearts. But deep down, I knew that I couldn't give up. I hit him back harder and harder and let out the loudest diamond roar I ever had. Because of this, Argo grew weak and was defeated. No! No! I'm sorry, Argo. I tried. Now it's a new time for all of us animals to get along. On day one, I spawned in as a diamond turtle. I was on a shoreline and knew as a turtle, the ocean was my home. Son, you have made it. Welcome to our home. I looked around and saw an entire civilization of sea creatures. Everything looks so peaceful and happy. Man, I want to live like this forever. Suddenly, the water started to change into green, poisoning all of us. Oh no, this water is being polluted too. Son, you must go now. We love you. I watched as my parents 
died in front of me. No! I only had five hearts, and they were depleting fast. So I swam as fast as I could to the surface to catch my breath. Wait, who's that? And are those machines dumping a bunch of waste in the ocean? Yes, my operation is going just as planned. Soon I, Mr. Pigsley, will become the richest man in Minecraft. Hey, what are you doing? Oh my, is that a diamond turtle? You must be worth a fortune. The man immediately got in a boat and started to chase after me. <laughs> this ocean is nothing but a junkyard for my mission. All I care about is being rich. And when I capture you, we're diamond turtle. I'll be richer than ever. On day two, I was swimming as fast as I could with the boat right on my tail. I quickly noticed that the water around me was clearing up. Time to go under. I was successfully able to go underwater and lose Mr. Bigsley. Okay, that was too close. I can't believe my family is gone. What am I supposed to do now? I then noticed the ground was rising up. Am I reaching land? I swam up and saw a small island with nothing but sugar cane. Oh man, I'm hungry. I quickly grabbed some to help return my strength when- Hey, that's my sugar. I heard a loud rumbling and turned around to see a giant torch quickly approaching me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just... The tortoise shot a water attack, though, and I barely dodged it. Hey! He charged in and kept attacking me. Since I was a baby turtle, I used my size to my advantage, dodging all of his attacks. I then built up my strength and hit him on the head. Oh, my apologies. I just realized that you're the diamond turtle. Yeah? You know who I am? Of course. Diamond Turtle is meant to be the savior to all creatures by stopping Mr. Bigsley. He's a billionaire whose greed for diamonds led to the invention of the most dangerous mining machines. The waste these machines create is slowly killing all of us. There are five different diamond temples scattered throughout the world that shall upgrade you to your final form. It's up to you, Turtle, to stop this. Up to me? The tortoise introduced himself as Jenkins and handed me a map that would lead me to the first temple. Are you sure I'm the one who's meant to stop all of this? I'm just a turtle. Jenkins told me to shut up and to stay here for the night to regain my strength. Be out by the morning. The next day, I swam over to a new shore after leaving the island and found myself in the middle of a desert. All right, diamond turtle. I guess I need to find the first temple. I noticed the single tree and was able to craft myself a set of wooden tools. Using a nearby cave, I was able to upgrade them to stone. The perfect gear for temple hunting. I was on my way to the first temple, but the heat from the desert was beaming down onto me. Oh man, it is hot. I needed to find some water and fast. I quickly spotted a pond nearby and jumped in, but started to take damage. Ah! Even the ponds are polluted too? Man, maybe more of this world was polluted than I thought. Suddenly, a rich-looking raccoon approached me. So, you're this diamond turtle that Mr. Bigsley told me about. I see you think this water is disgusting, but uh, I find it delightful. The raccoon then picked up a block and shot it at me. Thankfully, I was able to dodge it. You're coming with old Vito. I'll deliver you to Mr. Bigsley, and in return, he'll grant me the world's filth and pollution, just as raccoons like it. He started shooting at me again with any block he could find and was able to hit me. I tried to do everything to fight back, but with no upgrades, I had a severe disadvantage. Come man, pick on someone your own size. A rabbit jumped in and started to fight off the raccoon. He was extremely fast and used this to his advantage, ultimately leading to the raccoon running away. Hey, thanks for the save. Chopper, don't worry about it. I don't like bullies. It's nice to see another friendly face around here. The name's Rod. Nice to meet you, Rod. I'm Fozo. On day four, Rod and I's friendship quickly developed and we decided to stick together. We were continuing to follow the map to the first of six temples when we approached an entrance to an old mine shaft. Oh no, this place looked a little scary. John, what's so scary, man? Come on, we'll be fine, huh? We walked through until we noticed a small railroad system with a couple of mine carts. This is where the map ends. I'm not so sure about this, but deep down, I knew I had no other choice. I got in the mine cart with Rod and they slowly slowly started to go forward. Uh, did I say slowly? It was going faster and faster every second I was in it. Is it supposed to go this fast? Cha, come on, man. It ain't that bad. Rod spoke too soon, though, because I noticed the head of the railroad system. There was a huge hole in the middle of it. I don't think that's supposed to be there. Me neither. Cha! Ah! 
Okay, that was close. Do you think the temple is down there? Child, only one way to find out. Wait, no. Ah! Ah! Thank goodness there was a pool of water here. Wait, what is this place? After a second glance, I realized that I was in the first temple. This place was awesome. I looked over and saw a diamond looking apple sitting on a pillar. I'm guessing this is what I was after. I climbed up and ate the diamond apple, which upgraded me to my second form. I gained five more hearts and grew in size. I also had a new ability called the diamond punch? Sweet! I noticed there was a passageway that was blocked. So using my new diamond punch ability, I was able to punch, blowing up the entire entrance. Cha, there you are. Looks like you've gotten stronger there, pal. I'm happy for you. Thanks, Rod. And never push me down a dark and scary hole again. Rod agreed. And we both left the cave. As we were exiting, we stumbled across a large swamp oasis. You know what? I think I just came up with an idea. On day five, Rod and I got to work building up our new home. Homes. I would build while Rod went out to gather materials. This is one body of water that Mr. Bigsley won't affect. I want this to serve as a safe haven for all animals out there, especially the sea creatures. I swam back to the shore to collect some seeds for a food source. With those, we were able to build up a nice small farm for ourselves. I even made an underwater kelp farm. Turtles love kelp. Cha, this is sick, man. You know, it's nice spending time with someone else. I haven't since. Since what? Well, with all this pollution spreading, I got split up with my family. Believe it or not, I really got a lot of friends. Hey, you know, you're my friend. And don't worry, I'm gonna help you find your family. I then heard a large commotion coming from the other side of a nearby hill. Oh no, what can that be? I arrived at a village, and from the looks of things, it wasn't doing so good. Families were there, all looking sad and scared. As I was looking, I suddenly heard mutters coming from behind me. I am tired of this. Hey, is everything all right? I am tired of this! Oh! The villagers started to attack me. Hey, stop! He didn't listen though and kept punching. I did my best to dodge him, but he was crazy. I stepped back and knocked him on the head with my diamond punch. Oh, uh. I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. My vision became blurry after eating that rotten, polluted food. I'm tired of it. I looked over and noticed that all of their crops were polluted. Why would you guys eat this? We have no other choice. Mr. Bigsley's pollution has ruined farms and crops for villages all over Minecraft. We can't survive like this. Yeah, no kidding. I then noticed a weaponsmith that seemed to be really sad. Hey, are you okay? Me? No, there's no materials left to mine. The billionaire has taken it all. Inside, the cave was completely barren of any resources. An evil millionaire is using the materials to build up machines that grant him resources, making him richer and richer, and damaging the world with pollution. The more he uses Something. That's not good. We need to find the next diamond temple. Temple? You don't mean the one up in the mountain south of here. It's not that far. What is that? The weaponsmith told me he wasn't sure. Don't worry. I'll find out soon enough. I reached the laser blast on day eight, and what was waiting for me was much worse. It was a machine that seemed to be aiming to a mountainside. Every time it shot, it blew a massive hole in the world, consuming all of its materials. This has to be him. Who, me? Of course it is, you turtle. Word has quickly spread that you are trying to stop me in my plan. Yeah, because you're insane. You killed my parents. You've killed countless animals all because you only care about yourself. Don't you see what you're doing? That's enough out of you. His machine was then pointed straight at me. A blast beamed out, but thankfully, I was able to avoid it. I ran up and used my new diamond punch ability to greatly hurt the billionaire. But he shot his machine again, and this time, it hit. I was low and knew that I needed to leave. Before, I wanted you for your diamond. But after learning your plans, I just want you dead! Before Mr. Bigsley could strike again, I jumped in the river and quickly swam away from him as fast as I could. Soon enough, I realized this water was also polluted too, causing my hearts to drain even more. As they were depleting, I noticed a mountain similar to the one the weaponsmith described to me. I think I just found where the second temple is. On days 9 to 10, I made my way up the mountain, only to be greeted by a blocked entry. This has temple written all over over it. After some searching, I was able to find a lever contraption that opened up to the main gates. This one looked a lot different than the last. I noticed that there was a hole in the middle of it, so I quickly jumped in, only to be greeted by a room 
full of polluted water. That's when I saw the diamond apple on the opposite side of it. The only way I can get it is to swim through this. Ugh. Okay, Fozo, here goes nothing. I jumped inside, immediately starting to take damage. Oh gosh, I knew I had to keep going, but I felt more and more weak. Ugh. My vision was starting to get blurry, but I suddenly got a vision. I was in clear waters again, and my parents were standing in front of me. Mom! Dad! Listen, son. It is you who is meant to fix all of this. Your diamond will shine brighter than the sun one day. You will see. Suddenly, my vision became clear again, and I was at the other end of the polluted hallway. I ate the second diamond apple, and suddenly my hearts turned into diamond hearts. I also had 15 now, and... Wait a minute, am I standing now? Uh, this is weird. Because of my diamond hearts, I took way less damage swimming through the polluted waters. Woohoo! I was walking back to base, which felt so strange. On the way back, though, I saw a dolphin lying across the beach. Oh boy, looks like I'm having dolphin for lunch today. Get him, boys! Not if I have anything to say about it. I blocked the crab from the dolphin, and he tried to attack me with his giant claws. Luckily, my diamond shell protected me. I punched the crab and knocked him back. Ow! A turtle that punches and is diamond and can stand? I'm out of here! This guy's a freak! Yeah, that's right. Once the crab was out of sight, I turned back to the dolphin and checked on him. He seemed extremely sad and weak. Thanks for the save. The name's Flipper. I used to live on these waters, but they're too polluted to swim in. Now I have nowhere else to go. Hey, don't worry. I think I have the perfect place that you would like. On days 13 to 14, I got to work making Flipper a new home. I gathered more resources and put Flipper's house right under the water next to mine. Oh boy, let me tell you, it feels amazing to be under clean water again. Thanks, pal. No worries. I then swam out of the water, only to see Rod charging at me. Hey, 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 ow! Chad, dude, thank goodness you're okay, man. I was like starting to get really worried and stuff, and I was like asking around if they've seen you and stuff, and wait, are you stuck? Um, it's a long story. The dolphin swam up and said he's heard many things about Mr. Bigsley. You have? Is there anything worth sharing with us? The only thing I can think of is his nearby mining outpost. He's been using it a lot recently to strip the world in that area. The dolphin told me where to head off, and I thanked him. I made my way out. Before I reached the location, I went to a nearby cave, knowing it was best to better protect myself. I mined any iron I can find and used it to upgrade my tools to iron tools. I even was able to make myself an iron helmet. All right, time to find out how to stop Mr. Bigsley's plans. On days 15 to 16, I was led to a giant hole on the side of a mountain and can see my minecarts inside. This hole looks like the work of Mr. Bigsley's machine. I could hear the sound of mining and ventured further to see creepers mining all of the material using their explosive abilities. Keep mining, guys. We need these resources to make Mr. Bigsley more machines. We don't want to make him angry. Hey, those materials don't belong to you. It's a diamond turtle. If we grab him, Mr. Bigsley's gonna reward us. Uh-oh. I had no choice but to fend off my attackers. I used my new diamond and punch to take the first one down. Good. I think I've got a chance. Ow! I got hit, and the damage took away some of my hearts. I sped around the mobs and tried my best to avoid their attacks. Eventually, I was finally able to take them all down. Man, that was close. Well, at least I'm safe now and- ah! Ugh! Oh man, I've really got to stop falling through holes. Hey, what's this? There was a map on the ground, and it showed me the location to Mr. Bigsley's lab. Maybe if I go there, I'll find a way to stop his pollution for good. I found a way out of the room and stumbled into one more creeper. Mr. Bigsley wanted me to make sure no one was snooping around his business. Bye-bye! No! I ran away and barely avoided the creeper's explosion. I definitely can't handle more of these guys around without any more upgrades. I needed to find another temple first. On day 17 to 18, I made it back to base, and Rod and I harvested the wheat from our farm and made some bread with it. There's not much wheat left, man. We're gonna have to find more crops. You're right, but we can't find any around here because of the pollution. The two of us decided to venture out and try to find more food. While on our trip, we noticed that more of the world was being affected by Mr. Bigsley's pollution. This is so messed up, man. I know. I have to stop this before Mr. Bigsley turns everything into a wasteland. Hey, a 
We looked over and saw a squirrel outside of a wooden shelter. You guys need to be careful around here. Red Wing owns these skies. Red Wing? The squirrel's name was Chip, and he was trying to keep the forest animals safe from Mr. Bigsley. Yeah, Red Wing is a giant hawk that plays on small animals like us. And if you need a place to hide, you're more than welcome to stay here. You know, Rod, maybe it is a good idea to stay here for the night. Cha! Yeah. Nonsense, Fozo. We've got no time to lose. Okay, we'll just keep in mind to watch out for Red Wing. The two of us continued looking for food until... Oh, no. We have company. We try to run under the forest. If this was Red Wing, we knew we were in trouble. Before we could fully hide, a hawk with large red wings landed. You must be the Diamond Churchill everyone's been talking about. You're coming with me to Mr. Bigsley. Wait, why are you working with him? You know he's destroying the world, right? Foolish turtle. I'm trying to save my people. If I help Mr. Bigsley, he promised to not pollute the climate I live in. So you're coming with me. Rod, run! The two of us bolted away from the hawk and tried to lose him. Red Wing, though, immediately flew up into the sky and started tailing us. Uh, come on. We can lose him in the trees. I managed to get under one and Rod was right behind me, but Red Wing was too fast and managed to catch him. Hey, let go of my friend. I ran over to him and hit him with my diamond punch, but he was unaffected and easily knocked me away. Cha, get your claws off of me, man. If you want your friend back, then you'll turn yourself over to Mr. Bigsley, Diamond Turtle. Red Wing was leaving with my friend and I was too weak to stop him. Don't worry, Rod. I'll come get you. I promise. On days 21 and 23, I knew that I needed more information on Red Wing, so I returned to Chip's shelter. Chip! Chip! It's you! Come on in! There's still some room! I went inside and saw that it was full of animals. There was even a small pond that had sea creatures. This is terrible, Chip. It's all thanks to Mr. Bigsley and now Red Wing. He used to be the protector of the forest, but now he's Mr. Bigsley's enforcer. He's desperate to save the other hawks. I asked him if there was any way to stop Red Wing, but he didn't know. I guess the only way to beat him was to find the next Diamond Temple. Oh, yeah! I've heard many things about them. The closest one from here is the one over by the volcano. Chip gave me the location, and I was excited to find that the next temple wasn't far from here. I was about to head off, but I looked over at the other animals inside. I can tell that they were very weak and dying. Chip, why don't you and the other animals head over to my base and stay there, okay? This place isn't ideal for you guys. I vowed to have a safe place for animals, and that included them. On days 24 to 26, I reached the volcanic area and noticed that there were holes everywhere. Mr. Bigsley must have been here collecting resources and polluting the area. If I'm not careful, this entire volcano could collapse. I looked around it and noticed iron ore alongside it. I quickly mined up any iron that I could find and was able to finish off my iron armor set. I continued upwards and noticed an entrance at the top. Maybe that's where the diamond temple is. Just then, clouds started to form in the sky. Oh my goodness. Perfect. It's finally going to rain water. Ah, ow, ow. The rain wasn't pouring water, but instead it was burning me. Acid rain? That's no good. I started to lose heart and fast. Ah, uh, I need to find some cover. I ran to the side of the volcano. Oh, that was too close. It's too dangerous outside to go up the volcano, but I need to get to that temple. I know. I pulled out my iron pickaxe and started mining my way through. On days 27 to 29, I finally saw an opening and reached a higher area of the volcano. There, the third diamond temple was waiting for me. I walked inside and found a spot that was holding the diamond apple. I went over and ate it and felt much stronger than before. I had 20 hearts now and acquired a cool diamond blast. Sweet. This is gonna come in handy. I made my way out of the temple until I was confronted by Vito. Ah, uh, Mr. Bigsley was right. There are diamond temples all around the world. How did you find this place? Eh, that doesn't matter. Mr. Bigsley is gonna have this temple, and I'm gonna bring him your diamond shell. Ooh. The raccoon shot his weapon at me, and I quickly avoided the block. I ran up to him and used my diamond to push him back. The punch, though, did no damage, and the raccoon managed to throw a block at me. Ouch! Try this on for size. I used my new diamond blast, but was only able to stun him. What? I still can't beat this guy? I made a break for my tunnel and escaped through there. I returned to base to get some more food and saw that Chip and the other animals had made it. Chip, it's good to see you guys here. Yeah, but where are we supposed to sleep? 
Oh, um, you do need some homes to stay in. I quickly went around the swamp and collected a bunch of materials. Then I built several homes for my forest animals. I even built a small little tree house for Chip. I expanded underwater and built several homes around me and Flipper's houses too. Thanks, Bozo. You really helped us out. I don't know about that. I looked over at the farm and knew that it wasn't going to be enough to feed everyone here. I also noticed that some of the crops were getting contaminated by the polluted water. I can't let them eat all of these. It would kill them. I need to find a way to undo this pollution. Wait a minute. Maybe? I used my diamond blast on the farm and the water turned back to normal. Oh, that was amazing. It's still not enough to keep it clean long term. I need to find the other temples. I knew deep down, though, if Rod saw this, he would be stoked. I miss my friend. I pulled out the map that showed Mr. Bigsley's location. It's time to go save him and be brave just as he would be for me. On days 33 to 35, I followed the map when I spotted Red Wing surveying the skies. Oh no, I hid under a tree and watched him fly away from the area. You know, maybe he could lead me to Rod. I quietly followed right behind Red Wing until he flew inside of a large building. What is this place? I reached it and knew that this had to be Mr. Bigsley's mansion. It looked like an entire operation was going down here. I went in and found Rod was trapped inside of a cave. Rod, it's so good to see you. I told you that I'd come back. Cha, I never doubted you for a minute, man. <laughs> Just, uh, can you get me out of here? I walked over to Rod's cage when Red Wing flew down in front of me. You're not going anywhere. The hawk tried to scratch me with his claws, but I used my diamond shell to protect me. I'm much stronger now. I then used my diamond to blast and hit Red Wing. Looks like I finally got competition. He tried to fly around and catch me off guard. He was able to fly by and hit me, taking away many hearts. Don't you understand, Red Wing? I'm doing this to save all animals. All I care about is my own. Then I'm sorry. The moment he swooped in, I perfectly timed another diamond blast, which caused him to be defeated. You could have been so much more, Red Wing. Uh, let's get out of here, Rod. You know, I overheard Mr. Bigsley say that he's creating a giant machine one bigger than the rest if he does this who knows how bad the pollution will get this is bad Cha, real bad things are getting a lot worse buddy because of bigsley's pollution i heard that my old home is almost inhabitable now i think my family's still there i don't want them to die fozo memories of my family dying began to flood my mind don't worry rod i won't let your family suffer the same fate mine did we searched around the mansion and managed to find a bunch of seeds and a water purifier with this, it should help us keep the oasis clean and solve our water problems for now. Rod and I were on our way to his family when we spotted Vito nearby. That raccoon was polluting more of the world. Soon, my trash paradise will come into existence. Listen, you don't have to side with Mr. Bigsley, okay? We can all find another way. Find another way? There is no other way. When I was young and alone, nobody wanted to be around me. Everyone called me filthy and thought I'd be better off dead. Mr. Bigsley was the only one who thought of me as useful. I shall make sure his vision for this world world comes true. No, you won't. I shot Vito with my diamond blast, stunning the raccoon. Uh, just you wait, Fozo. You still have no idea what he has planned. Let's keep going, Rod. We journeyed into the forest and the place was devastated. Most of the trees were dead and the ground was destroyed by pollution. Wait, Dad? Rod ran over to his parents and his father looked extremely weak. Oh, Rod, thank goodness you're okay. Your dad is sick and I don't know if he's gonna make it. I threw him some bread. Here, try to eat this. He ate some and gained a bit of energy. This this forest is way too contaminated for you to live in. Come stay at the oasis with me and your son. I promise someday this land will be restored again. On days 39 to 41, I let Rod take his family back to my base. While he did that, I searched for a way to heal his father. I eventually found a village and went inside to see that the villagers were all sad. What's wrong? The polluted waters has ruined all of our crops. If we can't reverse this, we'll all die of starvation. I think I may be able to help 
help you with that. I went over to the villager's farm and shot my diamond blast at it, turning the crops back to normal. You did it! Now we won't have to starve anymore! <laughs> Do you hear that, Henry? We are saved! <laughs> Here, diamond turtle, take this as gratitude from all villagers around the world! The villager dropped a bottle, and it was a potion of healing. Oh, wow! Thank you! I rushed back to base and then gave Rod's dad the potion. He drank it and was immediately cured of his sickness. Thank you, Fozo. Cha, Dad! Thank goodness you're okay! Using some leftover materials, I built Rod's parents a nice wooden home next to Rod's. With all these animals inhabiting the oasis, I decided to grow the farm and use the water purifier to keep expanding water throughout all of it and hopefully getting rid of the pollution. Ah! What was that? Rod and I decided to go over to see what was going on. We both followed the noise until we reached the cause of it. A large machine was using a laser to drill through the mountain. Animals ran away from it. What? If this goes on, it'll destroy the entire biome. I needed to do something. I tried to use my diamond punch on it, but it was too hard to break. I used my diamond blast to stun the laser, finally shutting it down. Cha, dude, you did it! But suddenly... The machine started to make a weird noise. Oh no. Run! We bolted and the machine exploded right behind us. Why would the machines do that? These machines are only getting worse and worse. I think I might know why. I heard that there was a lab underneath Mr. Bigsley's mansion. Maybe that's where he builds all of them. Thanks, Rod. Hopefully, I can get rid of them once I find them. On days 45 to 47, I reached the mansion and looked around for the underground lab. Eventually, I found an area area that had a secret entrance. Once I opened it, I went down a set of stairs that took me to an area that was filled with large machines. With all of these, Mr. Bigsley can ruin the world in no time. I looked around at all of them until I spotted a valve on the wall. I hit the valve and it took me down an elevator to another room. Inside of it, there was a machine that looked a lot different than the others. It was enormous and I can tell that it wasn't fully built yet. I think this is the one Rod was telling me about. If this was fully built, I don't think anyone will be able to stop Mr. Bigsley. I continued investigating the lab until I saw a cage that was holding a chicken. And not just any ordinary chicken. A golden one? A diamond turtle? Please, you gotta get me out of here, man. I'm Sonny and Mr. Bigsley's been using my golden eggs to get rich and power one of his machines. My goodness. I gotta destroy all of these machines and get you out of here. Make a sound and I guarantee you'll be captured in the blink of an eye. Get me out and I can help you find a better solution. I knew that Sonny was right. I broke him out of his cage and we quietly escaped the lab. We weren't that far from base when Sonny stopped me. Hey, what's wrong? Listen, Fuzzo, I really appreciate you getting me to safety, but I need to get back to my farm. Your farm? But if you do, then who knows if you'll get captured again? Sonny was afraid that Mr. Bigsley would go after his golden chicks now that he was gone. I can't lose my family to that maniac. They mean everything to me. Don't worry, okay? I'll go and rescue them. You need to remain safe, though. Head back to my oasis. He was skeptical, but I told him to trust me. He did, and we both went our separate ways. I reached the farm, and it was already under attack. There were more of those rich-looking creepers, and everything was on fire. Let's get this chicks for Mr. Bigsley. I don't think so. I charged in and used my diamond punch to knock the creepers out of the way. I then used my diamond blast to finish one off. The second creeper managed to hit me, but he didn't do much damage. I used my other diamond blast on him too and easily finished him. Now, come on. Where are those golden chicks? I ran inside of the farm and heard a noise. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness you guys are okay. You guys look so scared. Come on. Let's get you guys back to your dad. On days 51 to 53, I was at the base with the Golden Chicks and Sunny. Oh, my babies! I'm so glad you're all safe! It was good to see Sunny reunited with his family, and it made me miss my own a little bit. You know, maybe these animals in the Oasis are my new family, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to protect them. I got to work building them a new home. I quickly gathered some materials outside of the base and made him and his family a large chicken pen. I know it's not the same as your farm, but at least it's safe. 
Thank you, Fezzo. This will definitely work for us. No problem. Now you guys get comfy. Because you saved my children, I think I may know where another one of those diamond temples are. You do? I've overheard things while being captured. Just be careful, Fezzo. Mr. Bigsley is onto your plans. I will be. Sonny gave me the location, and I immediately left the base. I reached the ocean that he mentioned, and just like my old home, it was completely polluted. The next diamond temple was under these waters, so I had no choice but to go down there. Maybe my diamond hearts could protect me from the pollution. I dived in and immediately took damage. I jumped out of the water and saw that half of my hearts were already gone. This pollution seems stronger than normal. There has to be another way to get down. Ow! I've never seen a diamond turtle before. A witch was behind me and was marveled by my appearance. You're trying to go down the ocean, right? You're going to need a special type of potion if you want to go down there. Would you mind making that potion for me? It's really urgent that I find the temple in this ocean. The witch agreed, but I would have to gather some ingredients for her to make. I will need some emeralds from the nearest village. And one last ingredient. What's the last ingredient? The witch pulled out a sword and sliced me. Ow! A sample of your blood. That should be it. Go! Get me the emeralds! I then made my way to the nearest village. I looked around in some chests and found five emeralds. You know, I think this should do. I made my way back to the witch hut and handed her them. So, what did you need this for again? Oh, nothing! I just hate villagers! <laughs> Anyways, here you go. The witch then threw me a potion of protection. You know, you lied to me, but at least you were useful. On days 57 to 59, I returned to the ocean shore and pulled out the potion of protection. This better work. I drank and jumped back into the ocean and I didn't take any damage. Nice. I continued swimming further down and the fourth diamond temple was within sight. Perfect. I reached the entrance and a group of drowned were standing in my way. We will not let you inside, diamond turtle. Mr. Bigsley has turned this water into a polluted utopia for drowned, allowing no players to explore this area. The drowned began to attack me, but underwater, I was too fast for them to catch up. I darted around and used my diamond punch to take down one by one. I defeated the last one and cleared the entrance to the diamond temple. I went inside and noticed that the water around wasn't polluted like it was on the outside. You know, maybe the diamonds inside of here kept the water clean. Huh. The diamond apple was on top of a pillar in the middle of the room, and I quickly took it. I now had 25 hearts and grew larger than my previous size. Now I could really tell that I was getting stronger, and I even acquired a new ability. I was able to summon diamond fangs out of the ground at will. Sweet. As I made my way back to the surface, I started to take damage and lose hearts. Oh no, the potion's starting to wear off. I swam as fast as I could and jumped out of the water. Phew. I need to get some food and regain my strength. I returned to base and refilled my hunger bars from eating our crops. Oh no, I was so blinded by my hunger that I ate most of our food. Oh, I still had the seeds that I took from Mr. Bigsley's mansion. I added carrots, beets, and pumpkins to the farm and also increased its size. Now everyone should have a good amount of food. Ha! <sighs> It's good to see that the base was coming along nicely. Cha, Fozo! Looking good, buddy! Thanks, Rod. Cha, you know, I think we should add more homes to this place. It's, uh, starting to get overrun by animals. I agreed. The both of us collected more resources around the swamp, and I built more houses along the shore and underwater. I knew that more animals would eventually live here until I defeated Mr. Bigsley. Once I find that last temple, I'll stop that billionaire right in his tracks. On day 63 to 65, I headed out in search for for more food and any information on the fifth diamond temple. I reached the jungle and it looked like the effects of Mr. Bigsley's pollution had reached this area too. Most of the trees have died and I couldn't find any animals around anywhere. It was like a ghost town. I knew that I needed to find the next temple, but where do I even start? Then I remembered Jenkins back on his island. He knew all about the temples. Maybe I could ask him. I went over to the shore and the water there was too polluted to swim in. No way am I going to make it across in one piece? If I can't swim across the water, then I'm going to have to sail across. I went over to some trees and used my iron axe to chop them down. I then dropped the crafting table and got to work building my incredible ship. Or just the regular boat. All right, Jenkins, here I come. 
Oh no, the island has completely changed since the first time I was here. Everything on the land was dead and even the sugarcane farm was ruined. Jenkins? Jenkins! I couldn't find him anywhere. No, no! The pollution got to him too. Now what am I supposed to do? While I was devastated, something caught my eye. There was a piece of sugar left on the ground and it didn't seem poison. I decided to go ahead and pick the sugar up. Once I did, there was a large flash and I was on the island, but it was entirely clean now. Hello, Fozo! Jenkins, you're alive! Where are we? Are we in some kind of vision? Ow! Of course this is a vision, you idiot! And no, I'm dead. The pollution got me. I'm so sorry. I should have come back and checked on you. Oh, don't be sad, Fozo. My journey has passed. Yours is far from over. You've made a lot of progress since the last time we met, and it's time you find the final temple. I think they should know where to look. I turned around, and my parents were standing behind us. Mom! Dad! Hello, son. We're so proud of you. We knew you were destined for great things. Go to the Badlands near your oasis. That's where you'll find the temple. Good luck, son. We love you. The vision ended, and I was back on the polluted island. Thanks, guys. I promise to make this world right again. On days 69 to 71, I returned to base to find that it was completely destroyed. Wait, what happened? No! The oasis was ruined, and the animals were all scared and hurt. Rod, what happened here? It was Mr. Bigsley, man. His machines came through here and totally wrecked the place. That monster! Get ruined! ruined our home. This place was supposed to be a safe haven for everyone. And now look at it. We need to build it back up and make it stronger than it ever was before. Rod and I quickly got to work rebuilding the base and fixing all of the animals' homes. They were supposed to feel safe here. And I'm gonna do what I can to make sure nothing ever happens to this place again. It took a couple days, but we both worked really hard in trying to make all of the animals happy again. After that, we decided to build a wall around the base for better protection. And there we go. That should do it. Even though the base was fixed, the animals were all still afraid. I can tell that they didn't feel safe. Everyone, please just calm down. I know you're all scared, but I'm going to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Oh, I think that was Mr. Bigley's machine. Come on, Fozo. I'm right behind you, Rod. We need to stop this now. We reached the machine's location, and it was even bigger than anything we've seen before. It was drilling a giant hole right through the ground. <laughs> That's right. Take all the resources and make me rich. Stop it right now, Mr. Bigsley. Diamond Turtle, I should have known you'd come here. Well, you're too late. If this keeps up, Fozo, it'll permanently damage the entire world. We have to stop it now. I know. The two of us ran over to the laser, and Mr. Bigsley pulled out a weapon to try and shoot us. We dodged the attack, but he was blocking our path. Fozo, you're too slow to stop that machine. I'll go do it. Wait, no, Rod. It's too dangerous. Rod removed the laser, shutting it off for a moment, but it was suddenly malfunctioning. Uh, it's gonna blow. Rod, get out of there. Tell my family I love them, Fozo. It's been one heck of a ride. Rod, no. The machine exploded, sending both me and Mr. Bigsley flying and separate directions. On days 75 to 77, I woke up and found myself in the middle of a plains biome. Ow, my head. What happened? Rod? Rod! I looked around and I couldn't find him anywhere. No, Rod! You were the best friend that I could have ever asked for. I'll make sure the entire world knows that. I looked around and also noticed that Mr. Bigsley was nowhere to be found. He must have escaped. I returned to base and Rod's parents were outside waiting for me. Fozo? Where's Rod? He, um... Where is our son? I'm sorry, but Rod is gone. No! Our son! He sacrificed himself to save all the animals. And I swear, I'm gonna avenge him and make Mr. Bigsley pay for his actions. Rod's parents were still upset, and I completely understood that. I was devastated losing my parents, and now another member of my family is gone. I built a memorial outside of Rod's home, and everyone in the Oasis took a moment to honor my friend. You're a hero, buddy, and I won't let your death be in vain.
If I wanted to stop Mr. Bigsley and make sure no one suffered the same fate as Rod, I needed to find the final diamond temple. My dad said that it would be somewhere in the Badlands. I was crossing over a biome when I heard the sound of a familiar voice. Come on, you stupid machine. Work! It was Vito, and he was standing next to another machine from Mr. Bigsley. How does that billionaire expect a raccoon to run something like this? Vito, this needs to stop now. This is only getting started. Mr. Mr. Bigsley is finishing up on his biggest machine yet! And oh my, is it a sight to see. Oh no, he won't. The two of us began our battle, and I quickly took advantage by stunning him with my diamond blast. I couldn't let him get in the machine. I then knocked the raccoon back with my diamond punch. He wasn't too happy about that, but I was confident in beating him. Vito tried to shoot me with his weapon, but I quickly dodged the attack. I then used my diamond fang ability on Vito, taking him down once and for all. Sorry, Vito, but your trash paradise isn't safe for everyone else. Hey, what's this? I picked up the map, and it gave me the location to Mr. Bigsley's operation site. Oh no, could he be building his final machine here? One that was bigger than the last? I need to stop him. On days 81 to 85, I reached the location, and Mr. Bigsley had a machine here that was bigger than any other I've ever seen. Surely this can destroy the entire world. I need to destroy it. I don't think so, Diamond Turtle. Mr. Bigsley landed in front of me and was now in some kind of mech suit. Because of you and that stupid rabbit, my mining has stalled, but that won't happen again. I charged in and tried hitting him with a diamond punch, but it was no good. He didn't take any damage. No one's going to stop me from becoming the richest man in Minecraft, and that includes you. He activated his suit and knocked me away. Ow! I dodged another attack and tried to counter with a diamond blast. Your weak diamond attacks won't work on me. Mr. Bigsley used a weapon from his mech suit and took more of my hearts away. He was too strong for me to fight, so I had no choice but to leave the area and escape. You coward! My machines are going to change the world! I continued my journey to finding the last temple until I finally reached it. I was still exhausted from my fight with Mr. Bigsley and needed the diamond apple to regain my strength. I entered and could see the diamond apple was at the end of the hall. I started walking there and noticed that part of the ceiling was falling right towards me. I jumped out of the way and avoided getting buried. Man, that was close. I then heard more of the ceiling coming down. I ran towards the apple and finally reached it unharmed. I guess this temple was booby trapped. I grabbed the apple and my body began to change again. I now had a total of 30 hearts and felt stronger than ever before. Even my diamond shell looked stronger. So this was my final form as the diamond turtle. I exited the temple and was surrounded by a group of more of the billionaire creepers. There's the diamond turtle. Get him for Mr. Bigsley. A creeper rushed in and tried to attack me, but my diamond skin was too hard for him to damage. I easily knocked him away with a diamond punch. Forget it! Let's just take him all at once! The creepers were all about to attack, and I could feel a new ability inside of me. I shot out a huge beam of diamond. Nice! This will definitely be useful. Suddenly, a beam of light shot up in the sky, and I knew that Mr. Bigsley had something to do with this. On my way towards the beam, I ran back into my base. I looked I looked at all of the animals and they weren't in good shape. The pollution was getting worse. And I was afraid that they wouldn't last much longer. Guys, don't give up now. All is not lost, okay? I'm going to head out and face Mr. Bigsley. Once he's defeated, I'm going to use my powers and purify the world. The animals were no longer down and they all began to cheer for me. You got this, Rozo. Go restore the world for what it should be. We all believe in you, Fozo. We know that you can do this. Thanks, everyone. I'll be back. I promise. I reached the beam of light and saw that the machine was now finally complete. Diamond Turtle, you're right on time to watch my new world unfold. Once I activate my machine, I shall strip all resources from this world at once, making me by far the richest man in existence. No! Mr. Bigsley activated it, though, and a huge laser began to drill a hole through the earth. It felt like an earthquake was happening all around me. Farewell 
Oh, Damon Turtle. <laughs> that laser was going to destroy everything. I needed to find a way to stop this thing. An idea popped into my mind. Okay, here goes nothing. I went over and used my diamond shell to reflect the beam back over to the machine. It sent a wave up into the sky, causing the entire machine to explode. Whoa. Thanks to my shell, the explosion not only destroyed the machine, but a wave emitted throughout the world, purifying it. No! Mr. Bigsley saw the outcome of the explosion and tried to flee the scene. I won't let you run away from this. On day 100, I chased after him and managed to corner him into a dead end. It's over, Mr. Bigsley. No. Everything that I've done is ruined because of you. Your greed for riches was destroying the entire world. I couldn't let that continue any longer. You blasted turtle. If I can't have the world's resources, then at least I'll have your diamond shell. In the blink of an eye, he summoned another mech suit and attacked. But my ultimate diamond form protected me. I used my diamond punch to knock him away. And I can tell that I was damaging his suit. I'm going to make you pay for everything you've done. I used my diamond blast to heavily damage his suit. This can't be how it ends. This is for Rod. I used my final upgrade and shot a beam of diamonds right at him, causing his mech suit to explode. Mr. Bigsley was gone. And now the world can finally be safe from his pollution. On day one, I spawned in as a diamond dragon. Whoa, check it out. I have nice diamond spots. Look at all my riches. It looks like I'm in a huge ruin too. Before I had any time to explore though, there was an explosion. All right, man, loot the cave. Is that a diamond dragon? Hey man, what are you doing in my home? This is my stuff. I must have the diamond dragon. Who knows what riches I can acquire with him. The king's men started to attack me. I was still a baby, so I only had five hearts. I did my best to fight back, but there were too many of them. I was down to just one heart. I had to flee. I started to run, and then I started to fly. Whoa, this is awesome. I had to stay focused, though. I flew off to avoid the king. I will have that diamond dragon's heart! Wow, it's only day one, and people are already after me. This is gonna be a long 100 days. On day two, I crash landed on a house in a forest. Ow! I guess I can't control my flying too much. I I'm sorry! Oh, man. This seemed far enough from the king and his men, at least. They wouldn't be able to track me here. I started to gather some of the wood from the house, and I made a crafting table. After, I crafted myself a set of wooden tools. It wasn't much, but at least I would be more protected. I went off to explore more of the world, and I came across a village that looked barren. I went and asked the villagers what was going on. <laughs> the villagers were upset and told me I was the reason the king was destroying their villages. What? I just spawned in. How could this be my fault? <laughs> Whoa, this is not good. I wonder if there's anything I could do to help these people. Suddenly, I started to cough, and whoa, I shot out diamond breath. Hit one of the villagers' houses and completely destroyed it. I didn't mean to. I didn't even know I had these powers. Suddenly, their iron golem started to chase after me. I had to leave. I'm sorry, guys. I flew off, feeling terrible about what I had done. I know I can make this right, but I'm gonna have to get stronger and figure out my powers first. On day three, I decided I would return to where I came from and see what was left of it. When I arrived, the entire place look totally looted. Oh, man. What happened to my diamond blocks? Those were mine. I started to hear rustling in the cave and turned around to see a little goblin. Hey, what are you doing here? Do you work for that king? Oh, no, no, no. I was just uh, wandering around to find some riches. Whatever you found, it belongs to me, okay? This is my home and my stuff. The goblin seemed very frightened by me and told me he didn't find anything. I had it and I was about to use my diamond breath, but the goblin ran away scared. He was trembling hiding. Is this what I become? A beast? I can't. Uh, hey, Hey, how about you come with me and we can make our own base and you can keep the loot. Oh yeah, that would uh, be great. My name's Gabby. Oh, well that's pretty straightforward. All right, let's go, Gabby. Now, I didn't have to be alone in this world. I had my first friend. First, I gathered some stone and crafted myself a set of stone tools. This was gonna be much better than my wooden set. We ventured off and found a nice place to build a home. It wasn't much, but it was better than no home at all. We got to building. I built up a small home for me while the goblin built up a tiny little hut for himself. I used my spare wood to craft some chests and then craft a few furnaces with the leftover stone I had. On day four, I woke up to Gobby standing right in front of me. Hey, Gobby, what's going on, man? I really appreciate you helping me out and being my friend, you know, so, uh, here you go. Oh, Gobby threw me over a core diamond and told me he found it at my home when he was looting it. Oh, wow, thank you so much. I looked at the diamond for a second and then I had this overwhelming feeling that I needed to eat it. When I finished eating it, I transformed. Whoa, I'm way bigger and I have 15 hearts. My skin looked different too. I had so many more diamonds on it. I wonder what I'd be able to do with my new 
powers. Suddenly, a group of Straddlers showed up at my base and started to attack me and Gobby. They started to throw things at me, and I did my best to dodge as many as possible. I tried to use my powers, but I wasn't able to control it. I was able to take them down. Nice. I'm still not accurate, but at least I'm more powerful. Thanks for the diamond, Gobby. I'm glad that you helped show me the value of having friends. After that was all done, I got to upgrading my house to be bigger so I can fit inside. There we go. Talk about upgrades. On day five, I had a dream of a desolate wasteland. The world was completely empty, and the only thing in it was a massive castle made of gold and diamond blocks. I was inside the castle, in front of the king standing on a massive diamond throne. Hey, what is the meaning of this? You can't just take all the valuables in the world for yourself. That is where you are wrong. All I care about is acquiring the richest kingdom in the land. You're the only thing I need. I will never let you get away with this. The villagers deserve to live in peace, not tormented by you. You are a dragon. No one in this world even likes you. You don't belong, you beast. He started to run at me and hit me with his sword. There is nothing you can do to stop me. I woke up in a panic. Was that a bad dream? No, it had to be more. I think that's the future if I don't stop him. I better get to work. On day six, I decided to head out and find the king. I needed to confront him fast and put a stop to what he was doing before it was too late. As I was flying around to try to find his castle, I was hit with an arrow and crash landed. Oh no, what was that? A group of knights approached me. They started to attack me. I tried to use my powers again, but they totally failed me this time. This isn't good. Luckily for me, they weren't too tough. I was able to take all of them down with just my sword. Wow, thank goodness for my dragon strength. I started to explore more. Eventually, I had been flying around for almost the entire day and decided to land in a nearby swamp. In the swamp, I saw a giant bird. Hey, uh, do you by any chance know where I can find the king's castle? <laughs> I'm afraid to say I think I'm the last one. Like I said, I'm looking for the king's castle. Do you know where it is? The bird explained to me that the king lived not too far from here, but it was highly defended. Oh, no. Thanks for the help. I took off towards the castle. On day seven, I arrived at the king's castle. I could hear a lot of commotion going on inside, so I flew up on a wall to try and get a better view, and I saw the king talking to the largest, scariest beast I'd ever seen. I will take down that dragon, sir, as you command. As much as I wanted to fight them now, I knew I was not nearly strong enough to take on the king's army and this butcher he hired. I flew off back toward my home to talk to Gobby about what was going on. On my way back, I spotted a cave and decided it was best to try to find some iron to craft upgrades. I flew into the cave and mined enough to craft a set of iron tools as well as some iron armor. This is definitely a start to being able to fight back against that king. On my way out, I spotted some emeralds and mined those too. Maybe I can give these to the villagers and win back their trust. I needed a way to apologize for what I did to them. On day eight, I returned to my base and started to talk to Gobby about the king recruiting the butcher. Ah, yeah, the butcher is an absolute nightmare, man. Things are not gonna be too good. I think we need to recruit some of the villagers to fight alongside us and overthrow the king. Without them, I don't think we stand a chance. Yeah, that's a great idea. I flew off towards the village I'd been to earlier. I knew I needed to win their trust back. And hopefully with my offer of emeralds, they would be willing to join my cause. I landed in there and approached the villagers. They immediately trapped me, though. They came up to the cage they trapped me and told me they were waiting for me to return. They planned to turn me over to the king for the reward. No, please. I came back to give you guys these and apologize. I threw them the emeralds, but they weren't interested in them. They said the reward they were promised was much bigger than a few emeralds. They were still mad that I broke their house earlier. You don't understand, guys. The king will never share with you. If you turn me in, all hope is gonna be lost. I started to get mad. I blew open the cage with my powers, but in doing so, I also took out the house that was being rebuilt. Oh no, not again. The villagers were yelling at me as I flew off back towards my base. Wow, I just want to help these people. But all I've done is angered them more. On day nine, I returned to my base feeling very defeated. To clear my head, I decided to upgrade my home. I wanted to include a lot of the cobblestone that I had acquired from breaking out of the trap, the villagers said. I started to collect dirt to create a farm. I also needed a reliable source of food at my base that Gobby and I could share. I got to work creating a farm and then used my leftover cobblestone around the outside of it. The base wasn't much, but it was coming together. It took my mind off the fact that everyone in this world except for Gobby seems to want me gone. Oh, don't worry, Fozo. Everyone will come around eventually. You just need to give them more time. Thanks, Gobby. I sure hope so. On day 10, I was awoken by Gobby calling for help. I ran outside and saw a group of mobs attacking my base. I quickly rushed out to defend it. I knocked them back with my sword, and once they were at a distance, I used my diamond breath. I missed the mobs, and I took out part of my base. I decided it was not going to be safe to use my diamond breath ever again, so I defeated the rest of the mobs using my sword. Gobby and I worked together to patch up the part of my base I destroyed with my 
diamond breath. I really need to figure out a way to control my powers better. I wonder if there's a way I can acquire some special diamonds and learn to better use my powers. Who knows what's out there in the world for me? I decided I would head out and explore the world to see if I can find any more special diamonds. On days 11 to 12, I was flying around the world when I saw another village. I looked down and noticed a group of knights approaching it. Once I got closer, I noticed the knights were starting to raid it. They were taking all of their food and going through the village looting their chests. This must be orders from the king because of me. I knew I had to do something. I landed and called out for the knights. They immediately switched their attention to me and started to attack. They rushed in and I started to fight them off with my sword, but there were too many for me to take down. I didn't want to use my powers because I was afraid I was going to hurt the villagers or another one of their homes, but I had no choice. I used my powers and luckily I hit the knights dealing a ton of damage. I used them again. They managed to take the rest of them down. Wow, that was lucky. I know a lot of this is my fault to begin with, but I'm doing what I can to do what's right. The villagers told me it wasn't my fault and the king's greed had tormented them long before I was even born. Wow, that's something I haven't heard of before. How about you guys come back to my base and we can work together to take them down. On days 13 to 14, I returned to base with the group of villagers I'd rescued from the king's men. I knew they would be safer here since the king didn't know where I lived. Gobby and I got to work building them houses to sleep in. We started with just simple houses, but I knew eventually I would need to expand them to make it feel more like the village they were used to. Next, we started working on a farm. I had enough food for Gobby and I, but now that I brought back these guys, I knew it wouldn't be enough. The villagers had offered to work on the farm as repayment for letting them stay with me. How nice of them. Once I finished, I had this incredible idea. I started to work on a project that was going to take a long time. I wanted it to be a symbol of hope and community for the rest of the world to see. I knew it would eventually help everyone in the world fight the king's greed. Once I was finished working on the statue, I was approached by one of the villagers. He told me there was a gathering at the butcher's stronghold. I knew I needed to head there and try to stop the butcher's army from growing strong. The villager dropped me a map and wished me luck. I took the map and headed off toward the butcher's stronghold. On days 15 to 16, I arrived at the location of the butcher's stronghold. I landed and confronted him. What purpose does fighting for the king's greed give you? Weak dragon, you know nothing of this world. Once I have your head, I will be the richest man in all the land. Is it worth destroying so many lives and causing so much destruction for that? The weak villagers don't deserve anything. These lives are pointless. You're a monster and I'm gonna stop you. The butcher charged at me and started to attack. I tried to keep him back with my sword, but he was incredibly fast. Every time he hit me, it was extremely powerful and I was down to only a few hearts. I tried to use my dragon powers, but I couldn't. This is not good. Pathetic dragon, your heart is mine. So I had no choice but to fly off as fast as I could. As I was leaving though, he shot at me. It hit my left wing. I landed hurt. I couldn't fly anymore. I had to retreat. I knew that I would defeat him once I was stronger. On days 17 to 18, I returned back to my base, feeling incredibly defeated. Gobby approached me, seeing that my wing was injured. Hey, uh, Fozo, what's wrong? My wing, it's hurt. I wasn't able to use my powers against the butcher. If I can't control them, there's no way I'll be able to defeat him or the king. I need to find more diamonds. Yeah, well, there's a legend that an old cave not too far from here is uh, said to contain rare ores that have never been seen. He told me where the cave was and said if the king hadn't already looted it, I might find what I need there. Gobby, why didn't you tell me that earlier? I headed off toward the cave. I reached it as the sun was setting. I found the entrance that Gobby had described to me. Outside the cave entrance was a group of zombies. I needed to clear them out in order to enter. I started to fight them with my sword. They weren't that tough, but with my injured wing, it was hard to fight. Once I had a few of them down, I used my dragon breath to finish them off. Wow, how would really be powerful if I could just use this all the time. I entered the cave and started looking for any special ore I can find. On days 19 and 20, I continued my search into the cave. The king definitely didn't find this cave yet because there was still a ton of iron. I took the time to collect as much as I could and use it to finish my set of armor. This should keep me protected from the butcher. Much better. Deeper in the cave, I finally saw something shiny in the distance. It looked like a diamond, but different. The ore was extremely shiny. I made my way over to it and mined it. I started to eat it and I can feel myself growing more powerful. Whoa, check it out. I have 25 hearts. My skin also changed and I'm full diamond now. I'm definitely turning stronger, that's for sure. As I exited the cave, I was attacked by a giant mutant mosquito. He charged me and started to hit me with his fists. This guy I was tough, but with my new diamond upgrade, I was tougher. A few more good hits, and I was able to take him out. Nice. I am getting stronger. I flew off towards my base to show Gobby my new upgrade. On days 21 to 23, I returned to my base and quickly found Gobby. Hey, Gobby, check it out. Notice anything different? Oh, wow, Falzo. You look much shinier. Looking good. Thanks, Gobby. I decided to take the time to expand my base. I started by making my house bigger. I created a storage room that would be able to hold all the loot I brought back for the villagers on my adventure.
adventure. Next, Gobby and I started to expand the villagers' houses. I didn't want them living in such basic homes. It was really starting to look like the village they lived in before. <laughs> Don't mention it, guys. Just trying to make up for what the king has done to you. As I finished building, I noticed some gorillas entering our base. They started to steal all of our crops. Hey, that's not yours. They ran off into the forest, and I chased after them. Luckily, I was a dragon, so it was easy for me to catch up. Where do you think you guys are going with that? The gorilla explained to me that the king had been taking more and more of the jungle to use on his war machines. Wow, I guess it's not only people being affected by the king's greed. I told him he and his family could just live at my base as long as they don't steal any of my food. I brought the gorilla back and built him and his family a little area to live in. Later, I would have to get some of the jungle trees to make it more like their home. The gorilla gave me a banana in gratitude. I was then approached by a villager who told me a nearby kingdom was being attacked by the butcher. An entire kingdom now? Oh no. On days 24 to 26, I made my way to the kingdom that was being attacked by the king and his men. I went in. The king rushed at me and started to attack me. I used my sword to keep him back and try to hit him with my powers, but I kept missing. Ha <laughs> ha! Weak dragon, you still haven't mastered your own weapons. I shot my diamond breath at him again, and luckily this time it hit him. It sent him flying away from the village. Whoa, saving this kingdom really did feel great. I hope all of you guys are okay. I'm starting a new village at my base to protect you all from the king and his men. You guys should tag along. They're extremely grateful and agree to come back to my base with me. I guess everyone was so sick of that king. I was approached by an old librarian villager, and he gave me a map. <laughs> He explained to me that the dwarves used to live there and they collected a lot of special ores in their time. Wow, this might be the key to unlocking my true potential. On days 27 to 29, I returned back to my base with the villagers. Oh, great. More mouse to feed and more building. Ah, just what we needed. Despite Gobby's reluctance, we got to work making more homes for the villagers. We built a few houses with a structure for lots of beds to serve as a hotel for the villagers. My plan was to arm them as best as I could to make sure they were able to defend themselves if I was gone. Some of the villagers were reluctant at first, but they came around to defending themselves. As soon as I armed the villagers, they tried to fight each other over the crops. I stepped in and quickly broke it up. We can't be like the king, guys. It did make me realize we were gonna run low on food with the amount of people living in the village now. So Gobby and I started to expand the farm. Next, I got back to work on my project and started to add more and more material to it. I needed it to be big so that when the time was right, I can use it and send my diamond powers flying across the land. I knew I was going to need more material to finish my statue and would need to find some redstone to power it. That was for another day though. The most important thing for me right now was to find the old dwarven mine and try to unlock my true potential. On days 30 to 32, I set off toward the dwarven mountain. As I was flying over the savannah, I noticed a group of elephants being attacked by the king's men. They must be trying to take their hides and tusks to make armor and weapons. I flew down and quickly started to fight off the king's men. With my new upgraded dragon powers, these puny knights stood no chance. <laughs> No problem. It's what I'm used to doing. Those knights are the worst. The elephant explained to me that they set up an outpost close by and had been coming daily to kill more and more of them. I knew the dwarven mine could wait and I needed to help these poor creatures. I flew off toward the outpost. It was a small structure. I can see men with bows and arrows and even some ballistas set up. The men were not very accurate and I was able to fly by and hit the outpost with my powers, slowly destroying it. After a few passes, the outpost was completely destroyed. Nice. I returned to the elephants and let them know that the outpost had been taken out. No problem, guys. If you are looking for a safer place to live, here are the coordinates to my base. The elephants thanked me, and I headed off toward the Dwarven Mountain. On days 33 to 35, I arrived at the old Dwarven Mountain. Wow, the villager's map actually did lead me here. Unfortunately, though, the map ended right here, and I didn't know where to go next. I waited a little while, and suddenly I saw a wandering trader leaving from the backside. Hey, do you know a way into this mountain? Yeah, there's a small passage in the ravine not too far from here. What are you doing here to begin with? I heard it was abandoned along long time ago. Yeah, every few weeks I come back and deliver supplies outside a large door and I left some gold and other riches. I'm not sure who takes them, but I'll take it. I thanked the trader and made my way to the ravine he described. Once there, I took a quick look around. It was strange. The mountain contained no ores at all. I started to doubt if the villager had known what he was talking about, when suddenly I was attacked by a group of undead spirits. I started to fight back, but these guys were incredibly tough and it took a while, but eventually down they went. On days 36 to 38, I finally 
arrived at the main door. It was massive and made out of gold blocks. I tried to open it, but I was unable to. I noticed that there were pillars on the outside. Three of them had shiny gold stars on them, but one was missing. Hmm, I wonder if I can find the fourth one that will open the door. Suddenly, I was attacked by an ender golem. He got close and punched me with his fist. I had to keep him away with my sword. If I got too close, he would jump up and slam the ground, which did a ton of damage. This fight was tough, but luckily, I had a lot of hearts. I hit him a few more times and was able to take him down. When he died, he dropped the last star. Oh, how convenient was that? I rushed over to the golden door and placed the final star on the pedestal. Oh no, is that an earthquake? I looked back and saw the door open. I quickly rushed into the door to find out what was on the other side. On days 39 to 41, I entered the large room filled with riches. There's gold as far as my eye can see. Wow, this is crazy. Suddenly, something hit me in the side. Ow, what was that? Who's there? I knew one day someone would come for our dwarven treasures. It was a dwarf, or I thought so at least. This guy was massive. I don't want your treasures, okay? I was told you might know of special ores. Lies! I had no choice but to fight back against him. He was quick, but I was faster. I was able to hit him with my dragon powers, and I could tell he was getting weak. Listen, I don't want your treasure, okay? I just want to know if you know anything about special ores. Ah, dragon. Never thought I'd see one. I know of special ores, and by the looks of you, you already found some yourself. I need them to help grow my powers. The more I eat, the stronger I become, okay? The final one you seek is buried deep in the desert with an old king, but you'll still need to master your powers. Will you be able to train me once I get the final ore? I know nothing of training dragons, but the elves that live deep in the dark forest do. I thanked the dwarf for the information and left this cave. On days 42 to 44, I returned to my base and saw I was under attack by a group of knights. They were using catapults to attack the wall. I noticed that the group of villagers I had armed were fighting back against them. Wow, I guess that was a really good idea. I used some of my special abilities to take out the catapults. We thought we took them all out, but then I noticed one was running away. He was surely trying to give our position away to the king. I chased after him and caught up to him in the forest. Wow, that was a close one. I returned to the base. I added a few houses for the elephants to live in. They thanked me. As the night was starting to set, I told Gobby about needing to travel to the desert to acquire the last special ore and unlock my full potential. Ah, uh, yeah, good luck, Fozo. Here, take this. He threw me a single carrot. Thanks, Gobby. I guess this will come in handy. I flew off toward the desert. On days 45 to 46, I arrived at the humongous temple. It was massive and seemed totally deserted, or so I thought. Inside, I started to notice a lot of trip wires. I did my best to avoid them, but I accidentally stepped on one and arrows started to shoot at me. Like, that was a close one. I heard a clicking noise. Oh, no. The ground beneath me blew up and I fell into a pit. When I landed, I was in a massive tomb. I looked around and noticed an ore I'd never seen. I made my way over to grab the ore, but I suddenly heard a grumbling behind me. It was a giant skeleton mummy. I prepared to fight, but the mummy spoke. What are you doing down here? Why have you awoken me? I just need to acquire this ore so I can get more powerful and defeat a greedy king that wants to take over the world. You're not here to defile my grave and steal my riches? No, just here for the ore. Oh, all right. Huh, I'm going back to bed. Oh, that was weird. I collected the ore and ate it. Whoa, I had 30 hearts now. Check it out. I exited the temple and headed back toward my base. On days 47 to 50, as I was flying back to my base, I saw the king and his men traveling with siege machines. No doubt. They were planning to use them on my base or another poor village. I decided to use my powers and fly over the army to destroy as many of these machines as I could. My powers were definitely a lot stronger. A stupid dragon. I'll have your heart if it's the last thing I do. You are no match for me, king. My powers have grown too much for you to handle. I decided it was best to fly off and not challenge him now. I will get you, dragon. I returned to my base and noticed that the village had been expanded without me. Hey, Gobby, what's going on? Yeah, more villagers arrived. The word about the dragon trying to overthrow the king is spread and... Wow, that is amazing. I can't believe you guys built this without me. On days 51 to 53, I woke up and decided to go mining for diamonds and redstone for my project. I went to a nearby cave and was able to collect a ton of redstone. It took me a while, but I was able to find some diamonds as well. I collected as many as I could and used them to make a diamond set of tools and some diamond armor. Check that out. A diamond block dragon with some diamond armor. This is going to be so easy now. After I was done mining, I started to work on my project. I was going to use the redstone to help power up my diamond launcher. When the time was right, I'll be able to send diamonds all over the world and restore the wealth the king was hoarding for himself. I went to talk to Gobby about the elves that I needed to go see. I don't trust elves, all right? They're bad people. Goblins and elves have never gotten along. I understand, Gobby, but the dwarf told me that they are accustomed to training dragons, and I need to understand how to truly control my powers. Whatever. Gobby wished me luck, and I headed off toward the dark forest to find the elves. On days 54 
54 to 56. While traveling to the dark forest, I noticed the butcher waiting outside. What are you doing here? The same could be asked of you. Ah, uh, no reason. Just going for a quick fly around the world, you know? You think the elves can save you? <laughs> no matter. How did he know I was here to see the elves? I didn't have time to think about it. He charged after me and started to attack. Luckily with my diamond armor, now he was less of a threat and I was able to almost overpower him. Before I could deliver the final blow, he ran off. Oh man, I almost had him. At least he didn't injure any of my wings this time. On days 57 to 59, I was traveling through the dark forest trying to find the elves base. I had to travel on the ground because the dark forest was too thick to see inside. While I was traveling, I was attacked by a massive horse creature. The creature was fast and he did a ton of damage. I began to fight him off using my dragon powers. The explosions were loud and very powerful. I hope I don't give my position away to the king and his men. The beast continued to attack me, but I was able to take it down with a few more good hits. I started to travel deeper into the forest when a group of elves ambushed me. No, listen guys, I need to find the elf who can train me. I didn't want to hurt them because I knew I needed to speak with them, but they would not stop attacking. Suddenly, I was struck with something and started to feel woozy. Oh no, I think I'm... I blacked out. On days 60 to 62, I woke up in front of the leader of the elves. Young dragon, I didn't know any of you were left. Listen, sir, I'm sorry I killed one of- No worries, you did not know. Us elves have trained dragons for years. You, however, are very special. Thank you, sir. This is why I'm here. I need to learn to better control my powers. The elf and I traveled to the top of the forest and spent time meditating. He said it would help me not to overthink my shot. We practiced breathing. Next, we spent some time doing target practice in the canopy. I was really starting to feel like I mastered my power. Power. Good young dragon. You have started to come into your own. I can't thank you enough. I can't wait to go home and show my powers to all my friends. Home? Oh, you're not leaving. We can't have the last dragon leave the world and fly all alone. Wait, what? I tried to fly off, but the elves trapped me in a cage. I tried to use my powers, but I was unable to break out. Dragons are sacred to us elves, and the last one must be preserved. On days 63 to 65, I woke up and tried to reason with the elves. They didn't care about the king and his greed, and just wanted to keep me safe from the outside world. You guys do not seem to understand. This guy will not stop at anything until he gets me. He's going to destroy the world over it. Don't worry, young dragon. Our location is safe. Finally, we found it. Well, oh no, he's here. Look out. The king and his men started to burn the trees down that were supporting the elf's kingdom. I told you he would stop at nothing. I pleaded with the elf king to let me go. It was the only way to save his people. You are right. He unlocked the cage I was in and I was able to fly out when he tossed me a bow. This is an ancient dragon bow. Use it well. I thanked him and flew off to draw the king and his men away. The dragon is fleeing. Follow him. On day 66 to 68, I returned home to my base. Something seemed different, though. I realized Gobby was nowhere to be found. I looked around the base, but was unable to find him, and eventually asked the villager if he'd seen him. The villager told me he had gone out to collect more wood to expand some of the villagers' houses, but had not returned. Oh, no. I started to assume something bad happened to Gobby, so I flew off to search for him. I wasn't too far from the base when I noticed a party of knights. I flew down and landed in front of them to ask where my friend was, but they immediately attacked. After training with the elves, these knights were seriously no match for me. Me, and I quickly took all of them out, except one. Where is the little goblin who was at my base, huh? <laughs> the knight explained to me while Gobby was out chopping wood, the butcher had snuck up and captured him. He had taken him back to his stronghold to use his bait for me. I knew it. I let the knight live for giving me the information I needed and flew off toward the butcher's stronghold. No doubt it was a trap, but I was much stronger than the last time I was there. On days 69 and 71, I arrived at the butcher's stronghold and landed outside of it. A few of his men tried to attack me, but I defeated them easily. I need to find Gobby. I called out for the butcher to show himself, and he finally exited the stronghold to confront me. Where is he? I have no idea what you're talking about. I haven't seen him. Your knights already told me you captured him and took him here. Suddenly, Gobby appeared on the walls of the stronghold. Hey, yo, Fozo, help me out here! And the butcher's men threw him in a pit of lava. Gobby, no! Gobby was gone. I started to attack the butcher. He ran into a stronghold, and I was unable to get to him. I flew into the air and started to use my powers on the base. I made sure to destroy every part of it. When I was finished, however, I did not see the butcher anywhere. He must have gone away. On days 72 to 74, I arrived at my base, still feeling incredibly sad about my
my friend. I gathered some materials and decided I would make a small monument for him. Now he will always be here with us. After building the monument, I went off to a nearby cave to acquire more diamonds and redstone for my diamond cannon. I can't lose sight of my mission. In the mine, I found a ton more redstone and more diamonds. I used the diamonds to finish my set of armor and then crafted some extra swords. I left the mine and started to arm the villagers in the base with diamond weapons. This way, we would have the upper hand if the king's men or the butcher decided to attack us again. I took the redstone over to my diamond cannon and started to add more to it. I used some cobblestone to create smooth stone and added it to the statue as well. Nice. This thing is actually getting really close to being done. On days 75 to 77, I woke up to the villagers gathering outside of my house. They told me that the first village I visited was under attack by the king's men. I knew this was finally my chance to win them over and set off toward the village. I arrived and quickly saw the knights were starting to burn it down. Clearly, the king was taking out some of his frustration on these poor villagers. I swooped in and used my dragon powers to take out their siege weapons before landing and using my diamond sword to finish off the rest of them. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. I've come a long way since the first time I was at your village, and I hope you guys can see that. <laughs> it's not an issue at all. I understand the struggles you were going through and why you thought that I was the reason everything was wrong. The villagers' houses had been totally destroyed by the knights, so I took them back to my base. On days 78 to 80, I woke up to my base under siege by the butcher and his men. Finally, he has come back, and I'll be able to defeat him once and for all. The villagers fought back against his knights while I took out his siege machines and siege golems. The golems had a ton more health than the other knights. I was able to take them out, though, using my powers, as well as a few good hits with my sword. Now it's just you and me, butcher. You stand no chance. I will never surrender. Your heart is mine. He charged at me, and I flew in the air to avoid him. I used my dragon powers from above to weaken him. Ugh, how is this possible? I am the strongest knight in the land. You are strong, but you have no honor, and therefore, you are weak. He charged at me again, but before he can get to me, my powers defeated him. No more butcher hurting the innocent. On days 81 to 85, I started to rebuild the wall and part of the base that had been destroyed by the butcher and his men. I took the time to build out the wall and make it much bigger and harder for anyone to get inside. This time, if someone attacked, they would stand no chance to get to the village. I then worked with the villagers to rebuild the homes that had been damaged during the battle. All the villagers were extremely grateful for the way I treated them and thanked me for my hard work. It's not a problem, guys. I'm just glad everyone is my friend now. I then set off to the mines to find more diamonds that I would use to armor the villagers with. I collected as many as I could and crafted diamond armor. Finally, I finished my diamond cannon. This thing is gonna make the king so angry when he sees how wealthy all the villagers are now that I'm giving back to them. I used my powers and only a single diamond was able to be launched from it. Uh, I wonder if my power source isn't strong enough then. I remember the dwarf had been using void cores to power the doors to his mine, and I wondered if one of those would be able to power my cannon more effectively. On days 86 to 90, I returned to the dwarf's cave and began asking him to join our cause. Dwarf, I need one of your void cores to power my diamond cannon so I can give riches back to the people. I am sorry, dragon, but I can't do it. We dwarves prefer to remain neutral in this world. You don't seem to understand. Without your help, we may lose everything. I see your point. The king will stop at nothing until he obtains everything. The dwarf threw me one of his void cores. Exactly what I need to power my cannon. I thanked him and started to leave. Wait, let me gather my material. I'll come with you. The dwarf and I returned back to my base. The dwarf then started to craft new weapons I'd never seen from some of his special ores. He began arming the villagers with these weapons, as well as giving them shields and crossbows. Now we're going to definitely have the upper hand. On days 91 and 94, I went to the center of the cannon with my void core and hoped it would be all I needed to power it. I took a deep breath and used my powers. There was a blinding light and suddenly it started to rain diamonds all over my village. It worked. I flew off to explore how far the diamond rain had gone. It was as far as I could fly. Even some of the villages I had not visited before were experiencing the diamond rain. I can see the joy on their faces. I returned to my base feeling extremely proud of what I had done. On days 95 to 98, I woke up to the sound of horns outside my base. Young dragon, we have decided to join your cause. The king took our home from us and must be stopped. Don't sweat it, guys. I understand you were only trying to protect me. We want to train the rest of your army to be more skilled with arrows so that the king will not stand a chance. The elves trained the villagers in archery and showed them how to master sword combat as well. The villagers were all geared up in diamond armor and now we're combat trained. The king's army was going to stand no chance against us now. We also created this for you, dragon. He threw me a potion. This is a potion that will enhance your powers. With this, you should be unstoppable. I thank the elf and went to bed. We had a long battle ahead of us. On day 99, I set off toward the king's castle with my army. When we arrived, the king and his men were
were ready. They had fortified the castle with siege weapons and were gathered outside prepared to fight. The armies charged at each other and clashed in a massive battle. The elves shot bows at the knights from behind while the villagers held the front line against the men. I flew around the castle, destroying as many siege weapons as I could before attacking the knights from behind. I told the knights they were outmatched and to go home while I dealt with the king. Some of the knights ran away, but others stayed for the fight and we made quick work of the people who chose the fight. I flew up to the top of the castle to find the king. On day 100, I reached the top of the castle and confronted the king. Surrender! Your army is defeated! I will never surrender! I want your heart! The king was so overcome with grief, he had no regard for his own life or the lives of his men. He started to attack me. I drank the potion the elf had given me. I could feel my powers grow even stronger. You do not have to fight me! Back down! The king didn't listen and continued to attack. I hit him with my sword a few times, and when he was weak, I used my powers and knocked him off his castle. No! I watched as he fell off the castle and was finally defeated.